welcome back to the Nethercast. How are you guys doing? Episode 17, we have with us a guest tonight. I'm Black Cyborg with temporary username Razor's Edge and Shadowloo, as always. But we have with us Smoke NC from MKO. How you doing, buddy? I'm huh? doing great. Good? How about you guys? Good. Excellent. Doing all right. I'm breathing. That's a step up from last week. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right then. Uh, we had some pretty awesome uh, video come out this uh, this past week. Actually, last week, last Friday, unexpectedly, I believe, and it kind of gave us some things to talk about this week. And of course, the chapter three of the um, MKX comic, which we'll get into. So, spoiler warning, but I'll warn you when we get to it. Actually, but where do you guys want to start off this week? You want to you want to talk about the video first, or you want to talk about the comic first? I'd say the video Chapter because they're actually six, yep. of the comic. Yeah. Chapter, Chapter three of the story arc, but compounded issue number two in print. Yeah, there's it's not really a three anywhere in there, is there? Not no, until I next don't week. That there is no. All issue right. three comes out in exactly <laughs> print issue three comes out in like two weeks from today, if I remember right. Which I do, yes. So now video, I just, we're, we're doing the comic, or? We're doing I the have video no first. idea, I'm <laughs> waiting for... <laughs> you should do the video first, there's a lot of stuff there. And... Cyborg needs to recover from saying something stupid, I guess. I guess, I don't know. <laughs> we can do the comic, or we can talk about the video. Well, the video's cool because we got three potential reveals. We got Jax, Sonya, and Liu Kang. We got an anti-reveal, too. Jade is not in the game. Oh yeah, that, that's a that's an excellent point. That, uh, we got shit, brutalities. Well, That'd be fun. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah, optimistic. The confirmation for that. on them brutalities. Uh, well, brutalities. The rumor has it they were going to be an MK9, like they were going to be a finisher that utilized the X-ray camera. Well, there was the uh, the sound clip for it. That but but the uh, brutalities never made it into the game. Yeah, Boone even yeah. said on Twitter that there was a working engine for brutalities, but they didn't have time to implement it. And we don't know if that involves the rumor with the x-rays or not, but we know it was indeed a thing, so it's no surprise to see it back. Yeah, I kind no, of not actually, at all. There's actually a third kind of finisher. Like We've got these faction kill the fatalities. Faction kill, yeah. yeah, the faction kills, which is kind of interesting. We saw the example in the video of, I guess, what, what, that was the... It looked like the, the I guess it's the special forces, forces one. It was right. some kind of drone with a flamethrower that burned Kano's face off. A fatality that you share, that you acquire for doing very, very well in these little faction I, wars. Of I want to see what's like uh, the. What do you suppose the Lin Kuei one is? Like a, a a whole bunch of ninjas just come out of nowhere and gang beat you to shit. What like Scorpion's UMK three fatality? That's yeah, that was great. Way as it gets. People are gonna be like, know, just for s special forces characters in the game, or will people just a whole bunch of uh, dumb gray yeah, robots so. start like tasering you? <laughs> <laughs> you actually get automated. That's the fatality. Yeah, like and then someone tries to prevent it, but rating stops. I say, them. I say, I say dumb gray robots tasering you because it's like the dumbest scene in story mode in MK9. Yeah, but, visually anyway, but. I actually think it'd be awesome if, like, they jumped you and then it faded out and then it cut to, like, an operating room and your torso's gone and you've got, like, a metal spine dangling out and you're screaming in horror. <laughs> yeah. Or you just wake up in, like, a cryo tube, just, like, suspended on liquid, like, halfway done. Look to your left. Hey, those are my lungs. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, see, if, if it were gruesome like that, it'd be pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Just a flesh know, husk think... with dreadlocks. <laughs> I think Kano shooting <laughs> rocket launchers in the Living Force was pretty dumb. <laughs> Dude, that I is a thing that happens. It's, that is it's such, a, to it's such a dick move. I actually kind of like it. He Someone would. has like totally a signature would. or like an avatar at TYM, but it shows Shang Tsung and Kano holding the rocket launchers and it says Thug Life in the caption. I thought that was funny. <laughs> I've seen that. I love it. Yeah, see, that's that's dumb, but in like a a funny, like in a good way. Yeah, a good dumb. The, the, fucking, the henchman from Defenders of the Realm just standing around zapping Sub Zero and Smoke. That was fucking yeah. terrible. <laughs> Look limp as hell. <laughs> it was dumb because like Raiden doesn't do anything to stop it. 
Like, at all. Like, well, I saved you, but, like, Sub-Zero's fucked now. Rico's fucking henchmen didn't exist. (laughs) Yeah, well, that's true, too, but... Yeah, I was just kind of pictured as being Cyrax and Sector chasing them both. Both of them yeah, the, the prepared whole, how the to deal with this. It was and... like the the Earth got all its souls stolen before anybody else could be automated. Yeah, so only yeah. the prototypes were around. And like, if you're gonna steal an idea, don't steal it from the fucking Dragon Jet cartoon, man. <laughs> that Dragon Jet cartoon had some great character moments, man. I will defend Clancy Brown Raiden to the death. Oh, that's that's true. See, I, I like the rain episode and I like the smoke episode, but the fucking the hench robots was a dumb idea. Well, how do we feel about the character reveals? Like, Jax looked, I guess, from what little we could see, well, he looked a lot like Jax. That's good, yeah, right? Yeah, he looks, he looks like he does in the comic, like he's wearing a vest. Yeah. You sure do got that there pair of metal arms. Right? Yeah, I, it's curious that he gets to keep the arms and Sub-Zero comes back from the dead, not a robot. <laughs> Maybe like, now they're implants be... as opposed to actual bionic replacements? Like they were supposed yeah, like, to be back I... in MK3? I think that would be, like, a really weird thing if he's like, man, I got my flesh arms back, but I missed the prosthetic so bad. I'm- <laughs> <laughs> Is this going to be that whole self-confidence subplot from Annihilation? Is that what I we're going with? That, I actually kind of like that. Did do that. Also, like, the, the, his the, the, whole the, thing the, was, I'm yeah, supposed to be the strongest day. man in the world, and, like, Kintaro beat the shit out of me. So I'm, I'm not strong enough to fight Outworlders. I need a bonus. Yeah, I don't get it though. The arms were clearly better. I don't know why he had something to prove. Like the world was about to be destroyed. No, why that, not that's the see, arms? that's the difference between annihilation and the game. In the game, they're logical and they're like, yes, Jax is better with the arms. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it's not a sappy, stupid message about like <laughs> believing in yourself. Not a self-esteem, you know, PSA. <laughs> eh. Give Jax. Jax. Give Jax a little bit of character. Is it the character we wanted him to have? Maybe it's better not. Than, uh, but I don't know. apart from that, you know, it's like the games never really did much for him. I'm going to play devil's well, advocate here. I actually I actually kind yeah, of no, like the MK2, incompetent angle. After MK2 and 3, his story is the exact same thing every game. He's just, mm-hmm. uh, I'm Sonya's boss. I'm in the yep. fight because I'm a good guy. I will take it's, confidence issues. I will. It's well, something. nothing nothing in Annihilation was as bad as Jack shooting guns going, oh yeah, that's probably the oh, lowest. Oh, yeah. That, that, is yep, that, was, that, that, that was a career low point. The, uh, and Deadly the Alliance out- Jack, not as bad as Special Forces Jack. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many things. A lower things. bar. This is Jax. Like entering a combo and have it keep and, and have it continue after you're done pressing buttons a good six or seven seconds later, like walking there's, through a wall and a dying. Fish, but the biggest fish drives a purple Cadillac. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that covers Jax. How about well, let's go to Sonya next, just to stick with the special forces theme. Her face doesn't look as good as it does in the comics, unless that's I mean, casting an she's alternate like costume. 40. But well, she kind of looks like Uma Thurman. I mean, well, I get that she's aged, but it looks like the face is different, not older. Yeah, if that that's, makes any I sense. mean, they've never been consistent with facial features. And the thing is, with the women, that might be a good thing. Yeah, agreed. Because, I mean, look at Unmasked Katana compared to MK9 Katana. Yeah, and we're definitely going to have to cover they, that as well. They are noticeably improving. I think Katana's At least in Katana's case. I, don't, I, I will say, I like so, that Sonya's got the green beret on because she is a green beret. <laughs> that was one of my favorite yep. things about MK versus DC was like Sony's entire look. She had the green beret, she had the combat boots, she had like the entire package G- uh, deal, and like I'm I'm amazed they never brought that back. Yeah, she she looks really good in that game, and she's looking good in this game. Based she on looks what great. Seen she's wearing a um like a jacket in this one too, like she did in the Deadly Alliance. So I'm I think it might be uh, and Shaman one of the, uh, Yeah, yeah, she looked yeah. really good in Shaman Monks too. Like, That's the best I'm, she ever looked in my opinion. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, um, yeah, I really like her uh, Shaolin Monk's outfit, but I like the jacket from Deadly Alliance better because it had all those patches and badges on it. Deadly Alliance wasn't bad. The thing is, when I look at Deadly Alliance Sonya, she looks like Kim Basinger to me. (laughs) And it's weird. Like, I just, just the jacket is the part I like. Like, the the camo pants and stuff from (laughs) Shaolin Monk's is better. I I don't know, is Kim Basinger... uh... 
Yeah. A regular LBV, like the normal load bearing vests that you'd see any military personnel wear. I don't know. There's something when I look at her Deadly Alliance outfit and I look at Deception, you know, the very next game, I felt like that design just God, I don't know. I, I feel like when you see her design again in Conquest, it looks really bad in contrast with all the character designs in Deception. For some reason, well, that one really stuck out to me. Jax, too, I, really. I mostly just chalk it up to a bad hairstyle. She's got, like, mom hair. <laughs> Kim She's not a mom, mom yet hair. in that game. <sighs> she did nothing to deserve that. Nothing. I don't Kim think Kim Basinger is attractive. That's me. I, that's... I think she was back in the day. Definitely. Even in the 1989 Batman, I still don't see uh, it. I don't know. The She's lead like ladies in the 80s. That was, mm. that was never was all like that. like a blonde Gina Davis. <laughs> that screamed a lot. She sure did scream a lot in, in, in Batman 89. Yeah, she screamed yeah. all the damn time. Minutes. Uh, I'm well, back, not... then, back then, they picked them because they could act, and now they pick them because they're pretty, like... I mean, would you rather have uh, Sigourney Weaver or Megan Fox? Yeah, Megan Fox is exactly what I thought. I'll take Sigourney Weaver, please. You know, it's okay. weird. Sigourney, I don't know. She never looked pretty in Alien, but in Galaxy Quest, Sigourney Weaver was fucking hot. And I, I know a lot got, of that. She's effects, actually but... gotten uh, a lot better looking with age. I think she's actually aged really well. I Indeed. agree. And yeah, I, I was never one for Sonya's MKDA main. It's... Starting that whole thong sticking out thing, which I really, really did not care for. I much prefer your alternate costume, the full military getup. But if we're yeah, gonna yeah, like I classic Sonya, I would have, I would have liked that more if it wasn't skin tight. If it had some like ba like bagginess to it a little bit, like yeah, that's like, no, like normal military fatigues. It looks, it, it does look kind of tight around the legs, but I think it's better than the thong sticking out. Well, right. you personally, know, per personally, ahead. four is my overall favorite look. Yeah, kind yeah of I like the baseball between, cap. It was a mix between, you know, the old, like, gym outfit and starting to look vaguely like you actually do belong to the military and not in a gym. And seeing me on, on, on the chest, it was it, it was a start. Yeah, the, the shotgun shells around her leg. Yeah. The sad part about the MK9 outfit is it could have been so good if they just changed a couple of things. Yeah, yeah, it was... It was like the jacket right. would have done wonders. The jacket, yeah, would have been like perfect some for MK9. some kind of like Under Armour or something like that, and like put her in some combat boots, and there you go, you have a great uh, costume for Sonya. I mean, the face is still a problem, but I could have looked yeah. past that, like I did I with other like, characters. I feel like it would also help if like they tinted it better. Like it's supposed to be dark green, but apparently all the cosplayers think it's black. I thought it was <laughs> black until the game came out. Well, no, that's not true. I think Shu United actually took her to Photoshop and showed me that it was indeed green. Props <laughs> to Shoot United. Wherever he is now. Oh, he's around. I think he shows up here and there. Cool. Going back going back to the thong, um, I I recognize why that's a problem for Sonya because she's supposed to be in full-on military gear, but it never really bothered me all that much. Um, it's just Agreed. a small detail. Yeah, I, uh, I think that it's like... It's a small detail that they just kept bringing back over and well, over again with absolutely zero point. Well, then, it's, if you go to uh, Mortal Kombat versus DC, the w the way her jeans are, like, riding so low, I'm thinking she's actually going commando on those. Well, she's got, I, like, a tan line where the thong used to be in versus yeah, DC. Yeah, exactly. MKDC is actually probably one of my very least favorite looks for her. She was not even wearing a shirt. That wasn't a shirt. <laughs> More of a sports bra. <laughs> that was body paint. <laughs> It was a little uh, cold out that day, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tit nipply. <laughs> I guess I'll make the breast of it. <laughs> you know, actually, as, as, we're, as we're talking about this right now, I'm like, I'm looking at the MK Wiki, and I'm just looking through various Sony pictures, and what do I find under the MK DC section but, like, a still from story mode where Joker is kind of, like, pointing roughly at Sonya's boobs, and she looks disgusted, and he looks amused. <laughs> That's fitting. That works. Yeah. Well, here's a question I have for you guys. Is it possible, just off the face, is it possible that this could be an alternate costume for Cassie Cage? I don't see why not. I think it's possible, well, yeah. Here's my argument. 
Why would Sonya have the power to do flying green kicks? That's why she can't be an alt costume. It's the ring around the neck. Unless they're like really planning on hooking Cassie up with a, with a bow sometime during story mode and having her get married. That looks like a wedding ring around Sonya's neck to me. On the chain. And knowing who she's married to and knowing that character's history, uh, maybe not such a good time to be Johnny Cage in the near future. Well, that's a good well, point. Point. Like, because I thought, I actually was going a different direction than you guys. I was thinking, is it possible that that's Cassie's face? And she's dressed. Oh, no, like, I, that doesn't look like Cassie. It's a different face, face, then. We all agree on she that? She looks way yeah. too old for Cassie. Yeah, it's it's Sonya. It'd be one thing if Cassie was, like, if this took another 25 years on top of the 25-year uh, timeline where you could see an older Cassie, but it's definitely Sonya. But you said there's a ring there, then, ahead. right? Yeah. There's yeah, a so ring. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's oh, around okay. her neck on a chain. And I mean, if she hated I mean, Johnny all that much, she wouldn't have kept that ring, right? So, like, there's something there. Is an alternate outfit... I mean, can the alternate outfit not have different moves, though? It's possible. Like a fourth Certainly. variation, maybe. Right. That's that's what I'm almost wondering, is if, if, if the Sub-Zeros are different... Well, we don't... Obviously, we don't know anything about that yet. They haven't divulged anything like that. But is it possible that choosing an, a different attire might open up different variations in that case. Some of the shadow kicks are Cassie's uh, standards. And I'm saying, is is it possible that that can be changed? I mean, I know Cyrax and Sector, their human form versus cyborg form, there wasn't much change, but enough to where they made it look different. So is it possible that they can just fully you know, exclude certain moves when you're using that attire. Theoretic I don't know. It just theoretically very. Cassie doesn't have any of Sonya's. Well, I guess if you had a variation that took away the green from her kicks and gave her the ring toss and the leg grab, I could see it. But that seems like more needs to be changed than you usually see in a variation. I feel like. And I think Sonya fans would not appreciate the fact that her playstyle doesn't feel like Sonya. It feels like Cassie with a, two more moves. Just ask Jade fans now. hi <laughs> Well, that's forgivable because A, Jade kind of sucks, and uh, B, at least mean. somebody's staying dead and they're acknowledging it in the story that somebody's actually mourning the loss of a friend. For once. I don't know. Jade's actually my favorite of the three uh, female ninjas. I, I, I like Jade a lot. I didn't expect her to be in this game. But from a gameplay perspective, I find the idea of a staff wielder much more... I play some mean in Soul Calibur. I, I like the background. idea of a staff wielder. I don't think they've executed it right since UMK3. Oh, really? Yeah. Even in UMK3, it was a little strange. I liked it in the chain combos in, in terms yeah, of specials, though. At least though. her dialogue combos, she spun the fucking thing. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I really like her as a character for the sake. I like the idea of someone who values camaraderie and loyalty. I think that's really cool. That, that as a motivation... As a prime yeah, motivation, but I mean, cool. we already have that with some characters. We had that in the Liu Kang and Kung Lao relationship. We have it in the Sub Zero and Smoke relationship. Jade has less personality than all of them. I don't feel like, especially in Kung Lao and Liu Kang's relationship, I don't feel like that friendship's ever been tested the way it was tested with Jade and Sindel and Katana. It with Smoke and Sub Zero, it, it was tested, but in a different game. way. Yeah, it, maybe. It might test, you know, we've got a, a Kung Lao who seems to still be a peaceful, nice guy coming back from the grave, whereas I bet Liu Kang is probably kind of, uh... <laughs> Pissed off? Angry. Yes. Extreme. We're still a bit burned. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting legacy Liu Kang. Fantastic. Can't wait to see that. Uh, hey, uh, think like, give him Striker's gun Liu moves? Liu Kang had a really dumb reason. MK9 Liu Kang has an absolutely great one. Well, re reason uh, aside, like, I think... It might be a closer portrayal to uh, Legacy, where he's just pissed off. I don't know, man. If someone ruined Frankie Goes to Hollywood to relax for me, I'd want to gun people down. <laughs> I totally get how Liu Kang felt in Legacy. No, no. That's no. <laughs> eh, a terrible song. I'd start a bar fight over that, even if I didn't have a dead wife. You know, fucking every time, now that I've seen Legacy Season 2, every fucking time I see Liu Kang's friendship at MK2, that's all I'm going to picture. 
Just <laughs> the fucking relax theme song. It's stuck now. Terrible. <laughs> but uh, back to Jade. Was she... Am I, am I, Wait, I, can, I can replace that song for you. I can save you. In the, uh... You remember there was this uh, art guidebook that came out for MK3? Where it listed, like, every character's favorite food and favorite, like, movie. I had and that all this. book. Ah, uh, yes. This Liu thing. Kang's favorite song is Baby Elephant Walk. Wow. So you can, uh... Yeah. <laughs> I'll take relax. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, um... Was Jade, if I'm remembering right, was she not one of the worst characters in MK9 to use? She's bottom two, probably. Yeah. In, in a nutshell, something is definitely wrong when, like, she felt more natural and easier to use in the fucking 3D games. She was awkward in 9. Just damn awkward. Yeah, and she was slow. So fucking slow. I think she had a huge hitbox, too, like, or Ugh. hurtbox, I guess. I mean, like, I think the only character who might be worse than Jade is Kano. And Kano had Ouch. gimmicks. Jade didn't really have gimmicks. Like, Kano was horrible, but he was also dishonest as fuck. You could fucking brain... You could you could random your way with a Kano match. You can't really do that with Jade. Jade, you're giving 100% and you're still struggling. Mm-hmm. At least with Kano, you can spam the cannonball. <laughs> yeah. And even the up ball, like, if you're not used to that... I'm not used to that. Fucking, um... What's his name? There was a guy who played us in the live stream who blew me up with Kano, and he was good. He was really good. He was the guy from El Paso, but I can't, can't remember his Tina fucking bag. name. There you go, Tina Bag. That guy gimmicked the fuck out of me with Kano, and props to him. Like that, that is how you play Kano in MK9, in my opinion. Give no fucks, just go in. <laughs> and Jade, Jade had the EX invincibility, and I think she could use it for like interruptions and maybe pressure and mix-ups. But you're giving up a bar meter for a very big gamble. And it wasn't enough, you know? I mean, you still have to get in. Kenshi doesn't give a fuck about your invincibility. Just, yeah, that that was a problem. And I like her design, too. I liked her design. Even in MK9, I thought she looked really yeah, her, good. Her I costume the was the one good thing about her. Uh, on every single other level, they botched it. I like the stripper pose. I like the wind pose with the pole. But yeah, that's yeah. I, I that will lump that in with the costume. <laughs> okay, fair, fair. <laughs> Like I, and I remember, like the the forums blew up when they saw her do that little twirl. Like she can't have some fun. I was having fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the first person to sit, to, you know, call bullshit. When I think that things are getting over sexualized, but ah, that was all right. That was fun. I agree. Fun's the key word, you know. There's something innocent about it, like. Fucking think, Sonya's tits were not fun. Sonya's tits were yeah, see, ridiculous. There, I think the reaction to Jade's uh, win pose was mostly just critical mass after Sonya and Katana. Maybe. <laughs> like, I can well, see it alone yeah, in a vacuum is perfectly fine. But in a game where the, the people seem to think that every single female character is just, you know, exploitation and their, their costumes are way too skimpy, then it's just like one more thing on the pile. Those people have not played the Japanese version of Bloody Roar 3 and seen those win poses. <laughs> oh, dear. I played Bloody Roar 3, but not the Japanese version. Well, yeah. I, yeah. I have the, the rules are different Bloody in Wars. Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, you know. J Japan Google gives us dead or alive, so. Well, here's a question Is oh. Jade dead because she died at MK9? Or is Jade dead because she died again in the in the new? I think uh, that would be hilarious if she dies twice. I, I'm <laughs> well, hoping it's just a simple matter of not everybody gets to come back. Yeah, yeah I'm, th I'm thinking she was one of the ones that Quan Chi still has captured. Right. Maybe that's why Katana's all pissy about everything. Well, yeah. um, I picked up issue number two of the comic today. We'll get to that later, but um, it does specify. I made a little thread about this on the on the on MKO. It does specify that a select few are resurrected and given a chance to, quote, make things right. So, yeah, not everyone comes back. Some people do get left behind. Right. So this is the so Eternal Champions now. Your Jade, your Strikers, your Cabals, they're not coming back, I wouldn't. We shall your see. Your Nightwolves. Your Nightwolves. Ugh. I don't even know if, like, Nightwolf even counts. I don't think he was one of the Wraiths at all. He, at he was there. He should not have been, but he was. Was he? God fucking he, damn it. He is the biggest plot hole of them because of the whole only the dead can exist or only the evil souls can exist in hell and he's so pure he couldn't go there in deception until he like took the sins from his whole tribe well dude Nightwolf felt his animality that probably consigned him to hell 
He did commit suicide. Maybe we're working on Catholic rules. <laughs> well, we do know that the gods in the MK world are print, are are vindictive pricks. So wouldn't surprise me. They're fucking inept, man. There's no way. There's no two ways around that. I, I want to see a scene where Kung Lao's down there. He's like, "But I'm a pacifist." <laughs> As he takes an oni and feeds him into the buzz saw. <laughs> I wasn't even supposed to be here today. After the thirty seventh time Kung Lao threw his hat on the ground, I think the other gods figured it out. <laughs> but I don't know. Like, um, I like Jade a lot. I didn't expect her to come back. I, how do we feel about the idea of her gameplay being incorporated into Katana? Because I do like that. I think that is cool. I think from what I've Jade seen, it's pretty back. cool. Like, it's yeah. yeah. I think Go on. I think in terms of like character and story it's a cool idea. I sort of wonder from a gameplay perspective if it means they ran out of ideas for Katana though. <sighs> you know, I, I yeah. feel like it's gonna be the reverse. I feel like it's not gonna be useful and you're still gonna have to rely on Katana's other tools. And literally the staff is like a cameo in her gameplay. I yeah, wasn't there's that too. The like the only the only move we've seen is one where she like stabs you with it, plants you on the ground, and then like does a flip kick as you're like hanging off the stick. And I'm like, that's not how you use a quarter staff. <laughs> quarter oh, staffs Jade. aren't supposed to extend either. Oh, Jade well, I'm okay know. with it being like a magic extending pole. I just want some fucking Keelik twirling. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we also no, I mean, know that she's got she's got the glaive too, but we haven't seen that in a, in a, in action yet. I must be the only person that still calls that fucking thing a boomerang. I call it a boomerang. <laughs> Thank you. We're old. I, I think most people call it a boomerang. Glaive is the technically accurate term. I call it, it a star. It, <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I think it's actually a really really nice touch, and like for me, I. I guess that's what matters the most for me. It's, it's, it really is nice to see someone's death in MK actually treated like a serious traumatic event and commemorated and, and make it a part of that character. It's nice. As to whether or not it means that she'll actually have a use for those moves or whether or not those things will be ass, I don't know. I'm hoping Here's the cool thing. I, I, I like, don't want to believe that they ran out of ideas for Katana like a lot of people are suggesting. There's so much you can do with fans. I can't believe for a second that they can pull shit like... All of, all of Kung Lao's variations with his hats and give her a, a, a flight um, version, for sure they could think of things to do with Katana and, and her fans. I'm, I'm, I'm positive of it. But this was a choice, and I think it was a very, very nice one. Well, here's the thing. Like, for me, the staff I get, because it makes sense that she wouldn't, Katana, that is, wouldn't really know how to fully utilize the staff, but a glaive... I mean, that's not that different from a fan. Can you imagine an instant air fan that functions the way of a glaive where the instant air fan fucking comes back for another hit? That sounds awesome to me. I would love to see something like that. Well, well she, combo yeah. extensions and oh my God, it would be yeah, awesome. I mean, technically she should be able to boomerang her fans. That would make more visual sense than the fact that they teleport after she throws them. By the by, is anyone now like really thinking chameleon secret character? Like... The way they did it in MK9, like, just directly copy-pasting with, with all the old moves. Because now, like, look at this. They could just give her size, turn her gray, call it a day, and call her a secret character. Like, okay, I was about to fight. say, I didn't know if it was Chameleon with a K or Chameleon with, with a K. A yeah, K, with got K. you. Now, this... Wait, Chameleon with a C is already in there. You just can't see him yet. <laughs> well, yeah. Girl, also, this saying. game is not coming to the Wii, and we know that Chameleon with a K yeah, only there's appears that. on Nintendo it's, consoles. It's not on a Nintendo when? console, so we're not getting Chameleon with a K. That's... That's got to end. Come on. She doesn't deserve <laughs> that. If this trend deals, we'll never see her again. Well, you know what? Even if you saw her, you'd just be disappointed because Reptile's afraid of women. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> uh, I mean, right, well, I guess, uh, yeah. We'll get some answers tomorrow, right? On the live stream, so we'll, we'll see what happens then. Yes, Definitely. Right. Yes. Yep. For Reptile. Um, Oh, speaking of recent footage, you you guys see the um they released a uh the Vine? Cassie Katana opening quote thing? Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah, saw that. So the the most interesting thing I think about that is the background looks like the firewell from MK4. Yes, it fucking does. I am it's, hyped. Um, I love that place. If I was to guess, it's probably the uh the stage we've been seeing Quan Chi in and like the uh MK Next trailer and the uh, yeah, Brotherhood but it of has Shadow. Those, those walls of skulls and if if that's if, you know, they incorporated parts of the Firewell into the Quan Chi stage, that's just as good to me. I just want to see yeah, some element of that in there. Yeah. 
Like, I had a theory that that stage in itself is probably uh, after Quan Chi offs Shinnok, like, allegedly, let's say that does happen, he takes his seat of power and uses it as the Brotherhood of Shadow, like, fortress in the Netherrealm. So that's what we're seeing. That's what that stage is. Go into that. Um, We sort of know what Shinnok's fate is going to be following the Netherrealm. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of factions, um, we got to see the logos for all five. Yeah. And the Brotherhood logo has been changed. It used to have a triangle at the top shaped like Shinnok's hat. Now it has a picture of Quan Chi's face. Yep. This is just Quan Chi's latest troll attempt to make everything about himself. Damn tears. <laughs> Those I set up the boards. So- if he fucking killed Shinnok and is wearing his skull, why isn't he wearing the amulet? <laughs> like, well, in the game where he wasn't supposed to have it on his costume, he did. In this game, he doesn't. It's, like, completely fucking backward. Could this actually be Quan Chi's alternate costume when we actually haven't seen this primary during the Another Realm War? I assume so, right? Because he's wearing Shinnok's head. <laughs> he's just wearing <laughs> it right in front is. of him. <laughs> We're gonna... We're going to discuss the Netherrealm War and what happens in a little bit once we get to issue number two a little bit later on. Because they do give us a very, very brief summary. I don't know if you guys saw the thread I made today about the Netherrealm War and its outcome. I was going to mention Shinnok a little bit. Yeah, I was going to pick up the comic, mm-hmm. but then I forgot. <laughs> I ran my usual half hour to my comic store to pick it up and ran back at lunch break today. All was worth it. Nice. You see, I, I haven't seen uh, the print issue too, but I read, uh, you know, the chapters four five and six that makes it up i guess there's more in the print version than there was in those um not this week uh last time we had a couple of extra pages which showed raven's flashes and whatnot this time it is just the three like prior comics going from the cassie and jackie uh sparring session all the way through to the secret origin of kota al khan but the interesting part is that there was a recap page at the very beginning which like i said does list well, ah, just summarize that, that recap page. That's what I'm missing. I don't know yeah. what that yeah. says. Yeah, yeah, I don't have that either. All right, there's a thread that I made on MKO today where I basically just copied it word for word and plopped it in there. But if you guys haven't read that yet, I will summarize that for you once we get to the comic. Sweet. All right, looking forward to that. Okay. Do we have other things to talk about before we do this thing? Well, there are. Uh, so, yeah, go on, Cyborg. I was just gonna say, well. Uh, about that video, other than some of the other things to be covered, I- I'd like to propose the question of what is everybody going to pick faction-wise going, or at least, you know, for the time being, what's your first pick going to be? Just because I'm, I'm curious what everybody picks, and I'm sure the listeners would like to know as well. So we'll let our guests start, actually. Smoke, uh, what what are you going to pick first? It For me, it's a toss-up between Link Way and Brotherhood of Shadow. And yeah, that's probably the two that I'm most interested in right now. Are you peeing as you're saying that? <laughs> no. Are you well, peeing maybe. into a water what cooler? What is that noise? As you're saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you retrieving pee from a water cooler? <laughs> is no, there I pee actually... involved? <laughs> yes, but it's because I'm actually peeing in a bucket at the bottom of my seat. So mm. like, I'm, ah. like, I'm, I'm not moving out of this chair. That's good. That's, That's commitment. We respect that. <laughs> That's on uh, the air the live World of Warcraft approach. Very nice. <laughs> I still play World of Warcraft, man. I even got that statue they sent out for, like, the 10-year subscribers. Well, whenever you're finished... um... (laughs) You have more free time than I do. (laughs) I'm going to miss that, so you guys guys can go ahead. Are you fine? Um, Shadow, what were you going to pick? Oh, God. Um, Shit. Brotherhood of Shadow all the way, guys. I don't know. Lin Kuei is kind of a funny place to be these days. I don't know who's in charge, who's running the show... I'd like to say Lin Kuei, but I've always been kind of a noob sidebot brother to Shadows kind of guy, despite the fact that their leader is, that their leader is a tennis ball-headed megalomaniac dick who will one day inevitably become the fucking Mortal Kombat dragon itself. But yeah, nah, it's only a matter real? of time, right? <laughs> Seriously. But for real, Brotherhood of Shadows is where I'm setting my hat. I gotta say, for, uh... his face makes the Brotherhood logo look ugly. Like, I don't... I used to like it, now I don't. <laughs> it was fine in its simplicity. I like the fact that they made his armor, like the shoulder parts, like the others, like the outside edges of it. That's a nice touch. I just, I wish we didn't have to look at his, his head as part of that. I just, I'm, I'm, See, I'm, the, I'm the that logo, tired of Quan Chi. 
Like, it always looked like those were, like, big shoulders, and then the top part was, like I said, Shinnok's hat, and then that circle in the middle represented the amulet. So what does yeah. the circle mean now? Is that the skull that he's wearing? Possibly. Maybe I don't know. Important. Well, Razor, what are you going to go with? Ah, uh, you know me. Lin Kuei is for the children. <laughs> <laughs> Lin Kuei clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Tim? <laughs> That's right. I, uh, what can I say? More stealth than the night, more deadly than the dawn. Lin Kuei. By the way, that Mon is ninja. a shitty saying. I hate that saying. <laughs> that is a shit line. It works the best when it's fine, but I love it. It works. It works the best when it's screamed completely non subtly by a mechanized robot man. Well, that's my favorite part. Sector said it a little different. He said more stealthy more. than the night, more deadly than the dawn. <laughs> Why is good the dawn than deadly? Human. Exactly. Like just just to to rub in that robots are better than people. I guess. <laughs> Like, I get why the night is stealthful. Why is the dawn deadly? I don't. I never made well, I guess, I guess it reveals people vampires. who are being stealthy. Have you ever seen like, morning farts? When the sun <laughs> comes up, if you're hiding in the dark, you're kind of fucked. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm personally, I'm leaning towards Lin Kuei or uh, the the Brotherhood of Shadow. I agree that the the logo is a little bit off putting now, but is is anyone in the world gonna pick the Black Dragon? Seriously, I'll man. Try it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Black Dragon and Special Forces have to be like the the last on that list. Definitely. I kind of really wonder if this whole faction thing isn't a not so subtle way for them to gauge just whether or not people give a shit about these groups of characters. I almost really feel like do. Cabal's gonna be in the game just so they have someone to put in that fucking faction other than Kano, because <laughs> no one fucking cares. No, well, I, I mean, know who they're put. This is Tremor game, remember? Yeah, oh. yep. finally getting him. <laughs> well, I honestly, and that'll drive up the number single-handedly. I don't know. Like, I actually all of those Tremor Kano. fans who've been waiting for years. I, I just can't do special forces. That's my least favorite. I hate Kano, <laughs> but I can't do special forces because I don't. I like Jax. I don't like the special forces. I don't. I don't know why. What about the I backgrounds? Like, what about, I well, like I like Jax. It doesn't I matter like what you like. The Black Dragon live on. <laughs> da -da. <laughs> the White like, Lotus has a really awesome background. I'll give it yeah, that. Yeah, I it's love got the White a pretty Lotus. Good one. We got a, yeah, that's, that's my favorite we got a thing. Glimpse that, like, of it, each so faction cool. has its own arena. Yeah, like, You usually definitely. don't see arenas for characters or groups. Like uh, It's usually all story-based, as opposed to like how Street Fighter or Killer Instinct does it, where for, they do stages for characters. Yeah. I guess Reptile's kind of the exception to that. He gets his own little hangout. Yeah, yeah. Hell, so hangouts. Weird you know? looking place with people trapped inside big green globes and a giant eyeball on the wall, but okay. <laughs> ah, I guess he feeds them to a snake. Even if Shaolin Monk St. Cannon, you know that snake is. Ah, yes. I, that's the kind of name. Snake. I think it was Nagini? Nagini. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter again. Is that Harry Potter? It's Harry Potter. That was the name God of damn it. the snake. <laughs> you can name it Nagini. I see no reason why not. But yes, the, the video also showed a Bowman character, kind of. It was on the, the tower, the challenge tower, whatever that's called. Those towers look awesome. They do look the really awesome. They do look good. Yeah, that's true. That, that Bowman has me so confused, though, because with Aaron Black, the fucking Bowman... Jackie Briggs, I don't like. I feel like we only have like five new characters left. I feel like we already run out. And, I feel like we've already depleted all our new character spaces. So I'm like, who the fuck is that Bowman? I don't uh, know. That's you know the interest. He looks kind of like an, another member of Kotal's race a little bit to me. Like he's got kind of a tribal yeah, thing going on. The thing is, like the. the, the those guys up on the tower, they're kind of statues. And, like, if you look at those, it, it depends on, like, the frame that they're coming in at. Like, and the lighting in, on those towers is really kind of darkish. It's poor. There's a frame there when I was first looking at it when, like, one of the pillars comes off from the right and Scorpion's on the bottom. But for a second, I'm like, holy shit, that's an Ermac retro because it looks so goddamn red. And there's also the fact that uh, Ed's, Ed's boot teaser and that little hand holding the bow teaser... You can see those fingers, and they're clearly kind of, well, they look Caucasian. So, I can see how, appearance-wise, it kind of looks like maybe a member of Katal's race. But, you know, you never know. 
It might be... Well, that's the weird thing. If you look really close at the texture on Kotal, it looks like he's got normal skin and he's covered in bluish-green mud. Meh. You know, it might just be one of those things where it's like a stand-in series of characters, like kill X many guys of Kotal's tribe or whatever it is. Someone mm. someone put that up as a theater, a theory. I could see yeah. it, maybe. Well, to respond to Temp, um, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like some of those are going to make the cut. Like, I'm starting to think that Aaron Black isn't going to make it into this game. I don't... It's it's very possible that they well, I'm, didn't... I'm actually more on the fence about whether or not he's in than I was, like, last week, because, like, Boot 2 does kind of look like a guy in cowboy boots and a poncho. Right. They're also pumping up Jackie quite a bit in the comic. Like, they had a little summary of who everyone was at the... I don't know if it was the last yeah. issue, but they had that summary page, and I'm like, man, they're really fucking zooming in on Jackie, which... I don't I don't want her in the game. I don't know how you guys feel. But um I hope you're right. Like, even if I lose Aaron Black, like I would Well, no, not Aaron Black. We're fucking keeping him. But even if we lose, like, <laughs> even if some of the characters not featured are not in the game, I hope you're right. Cyborg, do you think Jackie has a better chance? I, uh... Well, the thing is with Aaron Black, real quick, the the weird thing is he wasn't the issue number six cover revealed and yes. he's he's gone he is it's not just on it yeah it's just reptile devora kotal khan and ferator if i yep. if i'm getting that correct yep, so that is correct yeah. well yeah but there's the fact that i mean ferator is on that cover but hasn't been seen in the comic yet except for the this is right around the time that they mentioned that kotal suffers suffers his loss which he must avenge yeah, and this I think this is right after that, so it's kind of it, it's weird because Aaron Black's always been with Kotal Khan since the start in this comic, and now they do a cover and he's nowhere to be seen. That's just kind of suspicious. I'm hoping it's a stylistic choice, and they just couldn't. It might, it might just in. be it might just be a thing about cover art where they're all like, or, you know, the cover the covers sell characters maybe to, like that they're supposed to be recognizable, and since. Aaron hasn't been revealed for the game yet. They're not putting him in promotional material yet. Or actually it's very thing. possible that Aaron Black is the one taking the picture. <laughs> <laughs> actually, also, you know what, though? Uh, the issue the issue, where Cattell suffers is, the issue where Cattell suffers is lost, if you look on DC Comics, that's going to be print. That's going to be in print issue number three, the next one. That is... That cover is still not revealed to the general public. It's not, yeah. It's That's not. the weird thing. So, I don't well, know. we're getting there this weekend, I don't get, right? I don't get all the fear that, like, let's say, okay, let's say Aaron Black, Black is the one that gets off in the comic. That doesn't really stop him from being in the game either true, way, right? True, true, right. He could still it's, be a part of another uh, the another realm war on Kotal's yeah, side. Yeah, because we, we, we know now that uh, Kotal does fight in that war. He doesn't, like, show up right in the game yeah after. so like be between between the point uh between that point and to whenever aaron bites it or if he bites it it's still like a good 10 years so like there's no reason to exclude him off the roster just because he does get killed off in the comic. yeah that's a fair point on the other hand if he's this an important true. character in the game it's weird to kill him off off screen in the game because he dies in the comic well it's very possible that they didn't expect this character to get such a fan following and they just he's just a another supporting cast member that they had in the comic who knows he's the he's the boba fett or darth maul of this of this game like he doesn't say anything he just has to look cool and people just flock to him hey if they don't when in fact folks if they I actually prepared something I... for this podcast all right tonight's episode um i've been doing a little bit of digging and i've done a lot of research looking through these comics and these stills and i managed to an interview and i met the man himself yeah i i, I promise you here tonight on the nethercast that aaron black is is real, as real as Chameleon. So I'd like to present to you a brief top ten list of facts about the man that people may not realize, but you know he just sort of emanates this subliminal air of coolness. So here are some facts about Aaron Black for you and our listeners right now, right here today. These are all absolutely true. I promise you. <clears throat> ten black facts. Number ten. Aaron Black can eat 12 phone books in 10 seconds. I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it, and it's amazing. With That's the mask reason, on. With the mask on. That's one reason to fangasm all over this character. Number two, Aaron Black is not Johnny Cage. Kittleson actually did confirm this on, um, on Twitter today, because there have been some theories going around whether or not 
he's Cage or he's Striker or he's Cabal. It's kind of obvious in retrospect because Johnny Cage is simply not afraid to die and Aaron Black is death incarnate. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight. I, I hadn't prepared myself for that one. <laughs> no one can be. Number eight. Now, remember back in MK1 when they said that the seven characters were the finalists of the tournament? Hmm? You ever wonder yeah. what the fuck kind of tourney setup results in seven people being left? Well, Aaron was number eight. But he took one look at this competition and he said, fuck it, too easy. He then left. Presumably <laughs> to drink tequila and bang hookers because that's what cowboys do. He told me so himself. Ninja cowboys, specifically. Ninja cowboys. Gunslinger <laughs> cowboys. Number seven. John Wayne is Aaron Black's dad and is the only cowboy Aaron Black considers greater than himself. Well, him and Johnny Cash. Fact six and a half, Aaron Black had sex before his dad ever did. That is correct. <laughs> I presume so, at least. <laughs> Fact number six. Yeah, that sounds legit. Back in 1996, Aaron... Yeah, 1986, Aaron Black ghost wrote a song about his life and times, which was called Wanted, Dead or Alive, and he gave it to Bon Jovi. <laughs> now, although the song did pretty well in the charts and became kind of a classic, he was disappointed with the results and how Bon Jovi got it across, calling it, and I quote, watered down pussy shit. <laughs> he changed his musical approach a little bit and then two years later penned Wild Wild West for Kumo D. He was much more pleased with the result but did not care for, quote again, what Will Smith did with it. He has not seen the accompanying movie. <laughs> You see, I thought you were going somewhere else. I thought you were going to say that uh, he attacked Bon Jovi in disgust, and then Bon Jovi wrote "Shot Through the Heart." You're the or you give love a bad name. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Something along those lines. Aaron Black would not confirm or deny those rumors for me, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's obvious that he never seen Wild Wild West because Will Smith still walks the earth. Damn straight. <laughs> mm. What about the the Young Guns films? <laughs> I'm not a, whether or not he was involved with those. I'm not sure. But he did have a movie career, which I'll get to in a little bit. And number five, Aaron Black's most prized possessions are a set of precious antique cans, each with one hole through them. You will note that he has shot each of them several million times. <laughs> number four, Aaron Black built the Alamo. Number three. <laughs> We're just going to graze over that. We're just going to let that one fly by. Aaron Black has no horse. Aaron Black needs no horse because Aaron Black runs faster than any horse known to man. Gandalf's horse Shadowfax, Cabal, they are barely mobile statues to the man. Number two, Aaron Black plays Clint Eastwood in the Dollars Trilogy. Clint Eastwood <laughs> is a fictional character. Aaron Black is true. And number one, Aaron Black is so badass, Stephen King wrote a bunch of books about him. They are called the Dark Tower series, and I, presume, and I am presuming that they are about his penis. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That was ten black facts. What? No, in that's the all true. Fuck that's was Noah. that? The, <laughs> that's the just dark my tower. little. Uh, yeah. Is there, okay. What? Where did this come from? <laughs> this. This is just my response to the insane sudden demand for Aaron Black. I just felt the need to do a little bit of a comment to skid here. Well, they're not wrong because I took Texas history in high school, and we learned that you know Aaron Black defended the Alamo. From himself. Oh my god. I am not doubting the legitimacy of the facts on that list. But where in the <laughs> fuck did that come from? <laughs> uh, gotta do something. Gotta entertain I, the Well, listeners. we thank you, sir. That was a wonderful well, list. I, I have course. to admit, as impossible to work it into the plot as it probably would have been, I am a bit bummed that Aaron's not Johnny in disguise, because that would be the greatest acting ever. <laughs> I was actually kind of really hoping for it. I was. Just wait for the arcade ending. We'll get there. <laughs> you, can no, you imagine him unmasking and being like, where's my Oscar? <laughs> the most amazing thing is the fact that he was able to shut up for so very long. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, that's why he deserves the Oscar. I have a question. Where the hell were we before that? <laughs> <laughs> well, living towers, oh, yes. Dude. Aaron... Living Towers. <laughs> living Aaron... Towers. Aaron Black. Living Towers. Right. Oh, yeah. We were debating whether he's going to be in the game. That's right. Um, anything else to say about Aaron Black, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. What a man. I feel like I, I, I'm content. I feel like I've reached a good place. Yes. I heard yeah, that he could yeah. fly like an eagle and he fucked the shit out of bears. 
<laughs> also probably true. That is word on the street. Um, so wait, the third issue is the is the one that's starting this coming up Sunday, correct? That is the case. Yes. So then we'll know what the cover final is. I wonder why the hell they haven't shown that. I mean, it could I... be a big spoiler. It could be just they forgot. <laughs> I don't know. No, we'll know, <laughs> we'll know what it is. I, I'm presuming within the next week and a half. I, I don't know. Ugh, I don't remember if like the covers for digital issues one and I think so. three show the cover. I think they do so because maybe next few days then on the digital accounts. Like when you go into uh, Comixology or wherever you buy them from. The the Scorpion and Sub Zero ones were the first one, and the Raiden one was the second one. Is that accurate? Taking a look here. Raiden okay, was the yeah. second issue, correct? Yeah. The yep. cover, yeah. The cover for MKX issue number four. First image is Raiden as he appears on the cover of Physical number two at my side. Okay. So yes, with the next update, we should finally see the cover for number three. Cool. And all the mystery therein. Well, yeah. obviously it's because yeah. Aaron Black's on the cover, and you just Clearly. can't. Have- contain him in print media no he <laughs> cannot do he cannot he didn't he flies like a bear and fucks eagles <laughs> <laughs> it's possible that he it's, is uh, he is Kotal's uh he's fa- it, he is Kotal's fallen al- ally but he fakes his death because he's johnny cage and then he, and then johnny cage appears <laughs> he just pretends to die <laughs> it's like Kotal, come closer there's not much time <laughs> <laughs> the guy caged. Take this time, <laughs> take this time machine. You go back five years to Venice, California. You have to make this happen. You have to. <laughs> that would That's be a hilarious. great image. That's a fantastic image. Be... Now a little closer. <laughs> Just a little closer. <laughs> You're right, Ninja Mime did suck. <laughs> That'd be See, perfect. Now I'm really bummed that there's nowhere in MK Canon. Where Johnny goes undercover, and when he tricks a guy, whispers, "You got caged." It's <laughs> <laughs> a great moment. How has no one thought of this until now? I don't know. I'm sure, it's coming. You got caged didn't become a catchphrase till Shaolin monks, and they haven't used it enough since then. I do agree. One of these days. All right. Well, before we get into the comics, did you want to touch on Katana's variations, Temp? Yeah, um, it sounds like she has more of a rushdown variation for her initial, and I think that's called Assassin. And that's where we saw the running animation, where she jumps over you and does her thing. Everyone thought that might have been like a the run move combined with the throw. It, we're pretty sure it's a special move now. Yeah, I, uh, yeah? I didn't think it was like run and then an attack. It looked kind of like Reptile's elbow dash to me. Yeah. And it looks really good. Um, the Honestly, even though they said variations revealed... They were still still super fucking vague. Um, the next variation is more of a zoning variation. So we see that's when we see like the air fans and we see the juggle combos. And does anyone remember what that one was called? Does anyone got a name for it? Royal Storm. Uh, Royal. Uh, that's why I, I don't know why I couldn't remember that, but I knew it reminded me of it mixed me up with Raidens at first. But yeah, that could be cool. I had a feeling they were going to delegate her zoning to a variation. I was almost positive that was going to happen even before they revealed her, because I, I thought for a long time Katana was in the game. Um, I never thought they'd give her a rushdown variation. That surprises me, but I'm glad, because that's the whole idea of variations to me, is that you could pick your favorite character without being locked down to a style you don't want to play. That's what frustrated everyone about Sub-Zero. I love Sub-Zero. I don't want to, you know, chill out behind a fucking Ice Clone. That's not fun to me. So, yeah, that's... um. That's interesting, and with Mournful, all we know is that it's incorporating elements of Jade's gameplay. We don't know if that's going to be if that's going to lean towards zoning or rushdown. To me, it sounds like it's going to be a very mid-range footsie um, sort of variation, only because that's all there's left. I don't think she's going to have two variation, two variations of rushdown or zoning. So, process of elimination. That's basically what we have with Sub Zero. We have the uh, sort of the the more Defensive Unbreakable, we have the more footsy kind of Cryomancer. And with even though it seems like you'd be turtling with Grandmaster, you're not doing any damage with the fucking Ice Clone. And you can't zone with it. So it sounds like to me it's just going to be a really solid variation with the option of sort of controlling space with the Ice Clone. So it sounds like we have all three categories. 
That's what I think we're going to see with Katana. So more in full by process of elimination is going to be a footsie variation, I think. I Like, when I look at Ermac, all I know is combo, zoning, and flying. I don't, I don't know how the flying one's going to play. That one's still really weird to me. But that's what I got so far. Well, cool. I mean, it, she sounds like a lot of fun. That's for sure. But yeah, until we actually get to see all those uh, in gameplay, which we will tomorrow during the live stream, obviously, as well as Reptile, which I can't wait for Reptile. Yeah, we won't I'm have really a full. Yeah. 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 And we don't know it's... shit about him, except that he has one with a lot of spit. <laughs> yeah. And that they really did not want him to be selected last time. Yeah. <laughs> there, uh, Maybe spoilers also... in his variations, too. Yeah. Which was just They're a week ago, right? Sh- yeah, or is that two yeah. weeks ago. What two kind weeks of ago. spoilers could be in Reptile's variations? Like he has one where he's wearing Raka's blades as like gloves. <laughs> <laughs> They're also going to be showing off uh, concept art on the stream as well, so I'm looking forward Ooh. to seeing some of that. Nice. He also has a variation with a chastity belt to keep Chameleon <laughs> away. <laughs> laid By the way, not laid. Just two var- he's two wearing varage. a rape whistle. <laughs> I, I need an adult. In it, in it, in all his intro dialogue, he just screams, "Trigger warning!" Fire! I fire! Need an adult. No, but um, I have a theory tomorrow that there might be a character reveal, and they're just going to surprise us because we're so close to the game coming out. It wouldn't surprise me. Does anyone think that's likely? Unlikely? I don't know. I. They should just fucking go ahead and release Melina already. We all know she's there. We know her yeah, costume I, even. I'd say you it's know? it's. I mean, it's as just as likely as it is unlikely. It's fifty fifty in my opinion. I don't, I don't see them holding back for any specific reason. At the same time, they could go for a surprise. I mean, that's something they haven't Here's really just thing. done. There's so many characters, thanks to the comic, that we more or less know are in that they could reveal next. So it's right. not like Melina's absolutely next in line it's like we've been waiting a month and a half for Takeda right you know <laughs> and Sonya and really honestly Cage I still think Cage is in the game so yeah yeah so do I yeah that's um that's something that um Sean Sean Hemrick um confirmed this today he said and I quote GameStop does not know our roster keep hope alive boom so that that's discredits so that discredits the Shang Tsung, Melina, and Johnny Cage thing. Pretty much. I don't but I still think know Melina's about a that. I, I still think Shang's in the game, but well, I think it yeah. discredits the whole Cassie's taking Cage's place. I That's know. what I, I think it discredits. I, I never really thought that like GameStop had information to go on, but the fact that Carrie Tagawa's in the web series makes me wonder about Shang. I think. I just feel like, yeah, go on. I was just going to say, yeah, it's very possible Shang is. I just don't think that's the thing you go on is the GameStop thing. I think he deliberately said that to stop people from being like, oh, these characters are guaranteed in. He, he just wanted to stop that speculation. Well, the re- I, I just think there's huge legal repercussions for announcing content that's, that's not in the game, you know? True. So, well, yeah. I, ju- I, d- I don't think it was an announcement, though. I think it was more like, you know, the, the exact wording in that thing was famous rivalries like Liu Kang versus Shang Tsung. Right. That doesn't necessarily mean that those are in this game is so much like, hey, th- this is like the Iconics that are in most of the games. I didn't get that. It really did sound like they were uh, Shang Tsung. And, it sounded like the rivalry was going to be an MKX, and this is why you should buy it. That's what That's it sounded like to me. Same here. I guess we'll see, but yeah, it's just weird that he would... I don't know, it's weird that GameStop would say that, and then one of the Mortal Kombat team members would discredit them like that. It- it sounds like it was aimed at Cage, because the GameStop promo, I think the one after that said, Cassie's taking the place of Cage. I think that was the wording, right? I, I don't know. Um, I I'm just, not sure. I'm naturally yeah. inclined to figure that advertisements are empty and airheaded, I guess. You really got to figure that someone in NetherRealm had to give this the OK, or someone at WB or something. Yeah, that was probably it was probably someone from WB that didn't actually know about the roster or didn't yeah, care. Yeah, I feel I feel like a lot of uh, those GameStop segments are sometimes just like sort of a like a reporter is videotaped and sort of talking, and maybe there's you know speculation or just pure baseless hype in there. And I, I don't way. think it's, I don't think it's a commercial where it, it would be a legal thing, so much as it's like uh, here's some like lady from like game trailers talking for five minutes about, you know, whatever. 
I agree with the Polish magazine with the whole thing about Fujin. I think that absolutely applies, but it would just blow my mind if someone from WB saw, or someone from NetherRealm saw that and said, I, don't, I mean, everyone interpreted it as Shang Tsung's coming back. Well, at first they interpreted it as it was false, but obviously Dark Hound jumped in and said, no, that's a real promo. Then after that, it's not... I interpret that as Shanks in the game, and I think someone from WB and NRS would say, "Yeah, that sounds a lot like Shang Tsung's in the game." So I would think they would they would pull it or they re-record it or something of that nature. Like I don't know. It was a quick promo, and maybe I'm overthinking it. But you know, I, I you know what really gets I me is the wording. Think that WB legal would give a shit. It's like I'm gonna go after some guy on YouTube because he said he thinks Shang's in the game. Like again, I don't think it's a commercial so much as um like I, I don't I don't think the commercial is for the game so much as the commercial is for this personality who does videos for GameStop. <laughs> yeah, we'd have to re listen or look at the commercial because it could have been just as simple I don't even remember what the hell exactly the wording know, said. Something like rivalries like, like Katana versus Melina and Shang Tsung versus everybody. Like, and I think that I figured that like someone who says Shang Tsung versus everybody either is basically more familiar with the old days where Shang really was one of the more central villains. And I don't know. But I mean, even even just advertising, it isn't. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's just not out of question for me to believe. Yeah, just, I don't know how much those TVs and GameStop are pure advertisements. It's almost like Angry Joe show, except they put it in a fucking store. I, I, still, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it fits the pattern, though, if you think about it. Like how they put Jax in the trailer for the Living Tower. Some little tidbit like that fits the style of how they reveal characters, you know? So, I mean, I, I still wouldn't put it on the same level as Angry Joe. I still imagine there's a massive approval process. But you're right. If someone, if it wasn't NetherRealm Studios, if it was some dude in a suit from WB, yeah, they might not give a shit. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, at this point, I think we're just we're all just speculating. We don't really know. Well, there's nothing to deem it one way or another, but I guess time will tell whether he's in or not. So I guess we'll before just have we to get go to the by comic. That. Right before we cover the comic, did you guys want to go over the Polish article? I also want to touch on the combat pack. They they yes, Sean Henry yes. confirmed right. what's in there. So let's do that real quick, and then we'll go to okay. the Polish magazine. Um so Sean Hemrick did confirm on Twitter what the combat pack actually has. And yes, it is indeed four characters that ad as advertised, two which are iconic guest characters and the other two returning characters and 15 skins. So five skin packs, 15 skins in total. So three skins per pack, t technically. Yeah, that's not much hmm. different than the MK9 season pass. And yet it's like twice as much money. Yeah, well, the season pass for MK9 didn't come with the pe uh, the skins, which is no, it important. it definitely did. Are you sure? The, all of the retro ninjas were part of the season pass, except maybe Scarred Sub Zero and Retro Cyber Sub. Can anybody double check that? Because I could have sworn the the I skin packs was, weren't. I thought the skin packs were sold on the day of release, so you could actually buy that as one of the first pieces of the DLC. I but don't the, think the they first, were. The first the first set was i think like the the ones that were pre-ordered the um right like the mk1 males and the umk3 females right but like all of the rest were in the season pass huh because man i for some reason i don't remember like sub-zero's pre-order outfit reptiles pre-order outfit and Scorpion. um scorpions pre-order outfit and the fatalities that came with them being part of the season pass well i know you you could buy them separately but i'm not sure if they can <laughs> seasons pass i really not. don't I, I really don't think so but let's i i'd like to double check this before well you could buy the pack separately is what i mean right i think i made a separate purchase for the season pass well, that's, what I'm, remember. that's what i'm yeah, saying see, there is... was there was like one costume pack which was all the the pre-order dlc yeah and then okay, okay that's what i'm thinking of and then there was the season pass, which had right. all the rest of the dollars, yeah. Which were like the free ones that they packed in with the downloads, or no? I'm confused. No, the, the free the free ones were the first pack. Okay. So then you still had uh, to pay for the pre order stuff separately, because that that might be what I'm thinking. Yeah the uh, the the pre order ones you actually had to pay for if you didn't pre order them. Okay. 
that might be what I'm thinking then. Because I just remember there was like an additional cost. It was yeah. it was the costumes and the fatalities that were pre-order, and you had to pay for them if you didn't pre-order. And then in the season pass, you were getting four characters for the price of three, plus all the costumes that okay. you didn't like all the extra costumes, like the the retro cyborgs and right, uh, MK2 right. ninjas. Okay. So then, yeah, it must have been the pre-order bonus ones that were like, how much do you do you guys remember how much that was all together? It was like five or six bucks or something. Because I have no I want to say it was maybe seven or eight. It was like a weird number somewhere between yeah, five seven and ten. Sounds right. I think it was seven. Okay. Okay. So and regardless, the, the season yeah. pass was fifteen. I'm pretty okay, sure. so the season pass did come with the outfits. How many? Does anybody remember? It was like eight outfits from the cyborgs to the ninjas. Think. Um, I'm just trying to judge compared to the MKX season pass versus the MK9 season pass where they're getting this additional price from because if they're given 15 outfits and it's still the same number I of think, MK9 yeah that is pretty bad deal I think it was 9 outfits in the season pass yeah that, that sounds close if not the exact I'm thinking number Sector mm. and Cyrax Scar Sub Zero, uh, Retro Cyber Sub, right? Uh, Smoke and Noob Cybot, yep. And then um, Katana Molina Jade MK Two. Okay. I think that I think it was those nine. And I think the combat pack. all oh, it's not included. But like, if you get it, you also get Goro as like the fifth character. Yeah, he didn't say anything about that. I don't think he didn't so. say like at least that's that's what it is on on Steam. So like okay, I think you're right because it would blow my mind if Goro was one of the four characters in the combat pack. Like I that think would it's, just it's right. those four characters, the fifteen skins plus Goro. Okay, yeah, because Goro, I mean Goro's supposed to be for pre-order. So if you're getting not it off Steam right now, that's the same as pre-ordering. So we'll just assume fifteen or fifteen dollars for. Uh, the the four characters, and then of course maybe nine skins if that's what MK9 offered. Then so an extra six skins is getting us fifteen more dollars. I'm trying to figure out why this would, why this is the price point they went with. Yeah, yeah, and like the only thing I can the, think of is maybe the fifteen skins aren't just palette swaps this time. They're actually unique skins that go across more fighters than just ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> it still doesn't feel like it's worth 15 bucks to me. Like, maybe if there were stages and finishing moves in that pack. Yeah, I don't know. But it sounds like we're not getting any of that as DLC. A dollar per skin? I mean, yeah. 15 skins, yeah, a dollar per skin. That's what it comes out to, so... And then you're getting four characters for the price of $15, so you're saving five bucks on a character compared to buying it individually, so... I don't know, I guess. I mean, a dollar per skin doesn't sound awful when you put it, it that it way. Really, it's just... I guess for me, it depends on what the skins look like. Right, right. Yeah. If wasn't, Street, yeah. wasn't Street Fighter Four worse than that one to start? Wasn't it like two fifty for one of them? I'm not sure. Street it's Fighter... hard to say. I can't remember back in the day, but I know by the time we got to Super Street Fighter, it was in packs of five, and they were still yeah. kind of dumb in price. I think you're right, though. I think you bought individual costumes for Vanilla Four. I think Street Fighter, like when it was all said and done, had like almost two hundred dollars worth of DLC skins. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Something ridiculous. Dead or Alive Five does. On, or, are we five or six? Five. Five. Yeah, that has well over two hundred dollars now in costumes. Right, but like you get yeah, all those yeah. with ultimates, so like that's four hundred costumes total, with new co with new ones coming. And they're all Most of them are, are just different variations of a bikini. So I'm fine with that. I am completely fine with that. I've got no problems with that. <laughs> but he also did say your money. <laughs> he also did say he mentioned they the person asked on Twitter, are they all classic M MK one through MK Armageddon or all fan art like the Cold War skin or a mix? And he said, A mix of a number of things. So take that as you will. So it's looking like we're going to get some more, you know, thematic ones like the Cold War ones, some classic, and then maybe something that wasn't even mentioned. I imagine a, Deception Cryo Armor is going to be in there. There was actually be. a very... That'd be the shit. That'd be great. There's actually a very cool uh, fan art picture of the Cryo Armor on the Collective, if you guys check that out. It's uh, pretty badass, so 
if a skin like that makes yeah, it out. I, I saw that. There were some cool elements to it, but, like, I noticed he's got, like, a glowing hole in his ribs. I need to check this out. I haven't seen this yet. Receiving yeah, yeah, it's X-ray? A, is it the samurai-looking one? Yeah, 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 it's the one that's got, like, the Lin Kuei on, like, the belt. He's got, like, the icicles and stuff like that. Ice Sickles? Icicles? Commas? Icicles. We'll go with commas. Yeah, that's... That's the one that I said looked a little bit over designed. It was kind of packed. It's, it was like it's busy. Yeah, from the waist yeah, up especially. I, I like the way tons. they did the the helmet though, like the mask that looks like a mouth. Yeah. Yep. I I don't like it on movie reptile, but I think it looks cool here. <laughs> yeah, I did like Legacy the helmet. Scorpion had the best mouth mask. It's personally. got like a the Chinese sort of oni mask element to it that I I like. Does well, anyone yeah. have one costume they're rooting for? One they're really praying to God gets in the game from, or from the combat pack if it's in it. Like, is anyone waiting on one costume? Right, uh, other than for? the cryo armor? Yeah, we've said the cryo armor, so that one doesn't count anymore. Mm. Uh, do they have? Yeah, to there's a, a couple. Character we know are in the game. No, let's say no for now. But it has. Let's put it this way: it has to be a character who has a chance. Like, I, I wouldn't say Dramen, Obviously, if you pick a, a costume for Dramen, I'd be like, eh. I would like to see Mortal Kombat Deception Nano Smoke. I think that'd be cool because it could play into yeah. his Nano thing. Yeah. Agreed. Um, I'm going to say Quan Chi with puffy teal sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can laugh. I still think that's his best costume. Shaolin Monk's Smoke. That could be all right. Oh, that's a fucking mm, good one. Yeah. MK uh. versus DC Sub-Zero is actually pretty good. I like it a lot up to the shoulder pads. Everything else looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> For me, I'm going to have to say Nano Smoke. The only one I want to see more than Nano Smoke is Pigtails Jade, which I thought looked amazing in Deception. That is actually yeah, my yeah, favorite yeah. look for Jade. She's up there. So good yeah. But the she's not in the game, so she's <laughs> yeah. probably not in the game. That would be my number one pick, but I guess since that's not a thing, Nano Smoke. I think Raiden's a. Uh... Would a default in Deadly Alliance look badass? I'd like to see that again. That, well, are you talking about like the the really like elaborate the god costume or the the MK yeah, movie long haired yeah. costume? I I like the one with the uh, the cape and stuff like that. I thought it looked badass. That did look good. I just like to see a lot more thematic ones like the Cold War Scorpion and stuff. Like yeah, that. I'm all for I that. I mean, more fan art one. It doesn't have to be fan art, but just more like theme ones that we haven't even seen. As long as they like, look cool, obviously. I like the idea of that. I just I would want them to be more character appropriate. Like, right. what does Scorpion have to do with the Cold War? True, <laughs> See, true. I'm, I'm on the other way. I think, like, I guess is that thing, maybe, is that thing like, invisible I've, up on uh, on no, the community not, yeah, site? We haven't seen it. We haven't okay. seen what it look like. Like, I don't know. I'm I'm all for having like what if costumes and like I kind of want them to go a little crazy with it because like it, they should have a little bit more fun with it. Basically, I'll take anything that's not just palettes. Yeah, I just, I just think there, there's probably a more creative way to go than rehashing Red Sun Superman. That's all yeah. I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm with you. Part. I don't get it either. I'm like, it's like, what are we gonna do next? 1812 Liu Kang? I don't fucking get it. It just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, 1812 Liu Kang sounds like an idea, whereas, um, <laughs> you know, Cold War Scorpion just sounds like we did Red Sun for Injustice, so let's do Red Sun for Mortal Kombat. Like, no creativity. Yeah. If there's a denim jacket with a Guns N' Roses patch, I'm down, but I don't think <laughs> we're going to be seeing that, so... Yeah, see, it's it's not 80s Scorpion. That would be awesome, like, <laughs> hair metal Scorpion. But, um... That's yeah. a creative idea. So, yeah, I want 90s what about, Wolf. What about this Polish magazine? I want to... Wait, I want to see that Miami Vice Johnny Cage from the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah but um polish magazine basically they confirmed fujin as deceased right in the combat tower the yeah, challenge it's a, tower it's, a, yeah. it's a challenge tower mission so that That's doesn't right. prove says, anything really fujin has no, died and the elements are out of control and that affects the circumstances of the battle yeah it's like cyber reptile i mean the the challenge yeah, exactly. tower means nothing the challenge tower was filled with a like, lot of like there, there was a mission it's... in the mk9 challenge tower that said striker has joined the special forces that doesn't happen anywhere in the game we know better than that <laughs> Striker's too good for the special forces. What do we think of the idea? And we all, I think we all agree it's special bullshit. Special forces should join Striker. That's <laughs> <Yeah>, straight. <laughs> Striker's got tier. What do we think of 
Fujin uh, the dying. idea of well, the idea of the Polish magazine proposing like, what if Fujin's the villain? And I'm like, that's the dumbest shit I've yeah, ever heard. No, okay. it's not gonna happen. Yeah, we we talked about this a little before we started recording, and and I said, man, if Raiden screws up so bad that in this timeline Fujin goes crazy because <laughs> he's just tired of putting up with Raiden's shit, and so like he blows himself up and comes back as Dark Fujin. That would cement Raiden for all time as the dumbest, like, protector. In <laughs> He's just, like, after Fujin's like, oh, my God, do you just ever fucking do anything right? And then Fujin just kills himself. And then Raiden's like, what I do? What I do? <laughs> yeah. They bring you back for how many games? And I get Armageddon? And then <laughs> Fujin, Fujin comes back with his neck, like, snapped. And he's like, where have you been, Fujin? I needed you. <laughs> Where have you been? I called you I just, two I hours ago. I just want ago. the dialogue between Raiden and Fujin in game to be whatever Raiden says. Fujin goes, "Fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> just fuck you. I just want Raiden to be completely oblivious, even more so than he is now, to everything yeah. he does. So he's just like insulting somebody to their face, and he just acts like surprised well, when they're offended. Well, that's actually something I wanted to bring up. It's like that that uh, versus pose between, or the versus dialogue between uh, Raiden and Kung Lao, where uh, what do you call it? Raiden calls him out. Kung Lao goes, uh, "Forgive me for uh, forgive me for this, Lord Raiden." And Raiden goes, "I'm about to forgive your latest failure." It's like, "Fuck you, Raiden." <laughs> yeah, right. That's everyone's point of view in this game. Is fuck Raiden. Sub Zero thinks he's not good enough. Ferator laugh at him. Guys, choke. I just want him to quit like fancying it up and just come out and say, "Fuck you, Raiden." <laughs> <laughs> Should be Fujin's dialogue to everyone. Fuck just, you. Just give me that catharsis. Fuck you, reptile. What did I even do this time? Ah. <laughs> Every character should have some sort of humorous dialogue thing going on. Just like I was thinking more of like Sub-Zero and Scorpion. Like Sub-Zero just walks up and is like, you know what, Scorpion? Fuck you. And Scorpion's <laughs> like, no, fuck you. And just, yeah, just goes back. No, he'd yell, enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really looking forward to some of those mirror match bits of dialogue. I hope they have a lot of fun with those, personally. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. it's like Deadpool in Marvel Ultimate Alliance when he's talking to himself. Anybody <laughs> ever play that? He's like, hey, yeah. it's me! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, any any other thoughts on the Polish magazine? I don't know. I oh, love yeah. that entire thing in with the, with the same like canon pers- um, like weight as uh, Melina's teddy bear. Yeah, right? To be a cosmic from the time of his teddy bear awesome. cannon. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a thing for Scorpion. You know what? People make a big enough deal about it. P- people make a big enough deal about that teddy bear. I would suggest maybe keep your eyes peeled during MKX's story mode. Watch it be back there somewhere. Like lying against the like, throne. We'll get, we'll get a back. shot of her, like, uh, throne room or bedchamber somewhere, and it's, like, sitting on the chair. <laughs> they put. Sh- they put secret Easter eggs in and shit. Like appara- apparently, like on the PS3 version, you can see Kratos frozen in a block of ice for a split second or something. Yeah, like in in that scene where Sub Zero shows up in the um, Soul Chamber right after Smoke's yeah. chapter, and Precisely. he's just freezing a giant block and talking to it like it was some guy. Apparently, in the PlayStation version, Kratos is in the block. Huh. That's no, no, great. That's that's what I hear. I don't have the PlayStation version, so I can neither confirm nor deny, but. That's what I think of guest characters. <laughs> Amen. And the way I go. I've done well today. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Shadowloo, since you have the comic in your hand, or nearby at least, why don't you uh, take us through chapter three of that comic, as I was trying to say earlier? Well, I would love to do that. But first off is our obligatory spoiler warning. From here on out, folks. Shit gets spoilerlicious. And I'll put a I'll put a timestamp in the comments section, or not the comments, but the the description of the video. So just click on that, and it'll take you to right after we're done talking about the comic. Yeah. So look look for that in the timestamp in about three or four days. No, no, no. I did that <laughs> right away. Did did you did are the timestamps up for the previous episode? I don't know. Did I'm you just still working on them? Did you I'm do any of them for any episode? Oh God, <laughs> I don't do the timestamps. That's not my. What job. do you do for this podcast outside of show up? Oh boy, I 
I almost dick, died dick, last dick, week. Dick. Razor shows up and drops and his nerd dick on the table. That's All right, so All by myself. take your dick. that table. Finger pointing go elsewhere, yourself, sir. San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> but no. I were on Burgundy. I did put it. I, I did put that up right away. And if you want to bitch at anybody, bitch at Temp. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I was just it's bitching. Gone. It doesn't have a target. <laughs> so there are still no actual timestamps up there. We're not fucking around. <laughs> I'm discovering this live now while we're on the air. <laughs> They're almost oh. done. My God. <laughs> <laughs> almost done. I'm sorry, Shadowloo. What do you do for this podcast outside of Joa? <laughs> oh, let's see. Maybe, um... Humor call. Um, <laughs> on the microphone for you, you Sock ungrateful <laughs> prick. Insanity. Um, he did do the top holding, ten black yes, I did He did do that. I bring insanity to this podcast. That's what I bring. Insanity and a soothing singing voice. <laughs> and, well, a hard copy of the second issue, which I now have in my heart. All right, well, get to reading. Get to reading. <laughs> reading nail polish and reading a resemblance. Re- reading or reading. <laughs> All right, folks. Spoiler time. <clears throat> So before we get into the latest chapter of this wonderful saga, um, we have to say that unlike the previous issue, unlike issue number one in print, which had a few extra pages that the first three digital chapters did not, which showed Raiden's flashback, subsequent breakdown, and Fujin getting zapped by some pretty red lights, the exclusive that we have this time is a recap page, which appears at the very beginning of the issue, just before we see Cassie and uh, Jackie's sparring session and Fujin being helped up from uh, a hole in his chest. <clears throat> so, this recap section details in some respect things that happened during the Netherrealm War. And here we go. Even after defeating the evil Shao Kahn, humanity was not safe. A fallen elder god named Shinnok rose to lead the undead armies of Netherrealm against us in a war that nearly destroyed Earthrealm. Nearly. Against all odds, Raiden and his champions prevailed. Shinnok was imprisoned and his undead army was driven back to the Netherrealm, except for a fortunate few miraculously restored to life and granted the opportunity to set things right. Should we stop there to take that in? That's what she said. Pretty much like MK4. Pretty much. <clears throat> but this is important because now we know that Shinnok doesn't get killed during this segment. He's imprisoned. It's true. It's true. He is still fair game. He's not going to be dead a third of the way through story mode. He's just locked away somehow, somewhere, for all we know. That skull on Quan Chi's chest may not be him after all. Or unless he's been imprisoned in his own skull, which would be pretty fucking hardcore and metal. Anyway... <clears throat> Previously in Mortal Kombat X, given a second chance at life, Hanzo and Sashi, aka Scorpion, reformed the Shira Ryu clan and took in Takeda, son of the swordsman Kenshi, as his latest apprentice. But after a demon possessed one of Hanzo's students, he had an ancient dagger and massacred the rest of his clan. Scorpion vowed to finish the being who had originally given him the dagger, Raiden. Not so much new there. Meanwhile, after Emperor Shao Kahn's death, his sole heir, Melina, claimed the throne of Outworld. As the war between Earthrealm and Netherrealm threatened to spread to Outworld, Empress Melina refused to coordinate a defense effort, ignoring the pleas of her war chief, Kotal. Finally, after a great battle, Melina was overthrown. Those who sided with the would be Empress became enemies of the new Emperor, now calling himself Kotal Khan. So, what we learn from this is that Kotal doesn't just come marching into Outworld demanding the throne from Melina. He becomes her war chief at some point after he first enters, and Melina is batshit insane, doesn't listen to him, and so there's a bit of a fight, and after some time, she gets deposed. Kotal is now, as it seems to be, the tried and true ruler of Outworld at the current time. And thus the Outworld Civil War began, featuring the following. Hanzo Asashi, aka Scorpion. Grandmaster of the Shirawayu and former Netherrealm agent. Kenshi, Special Forces agent, absentee father. Takeda, son of Kenshi, Scorpion's apprentice. I think I can skip over a raid in here because we know what he is. Sonia Blade, commander of Earthrealm Strategic Defense. Jackie Briggs, daughter of Jackson, Jax Briggs. Daughter, not niece. 
We know Cassie. Yeah, I saw that. We know Cassie. Aaron Black, a mysterious mercenary living in Outworld. Devorah, first minister to Kotal Khan. And Kotal Khan himself, emperor of Outworld, Oshtek warrior. And we'll become familiar with the term Oshtek in just a hot second. So the issue opens, and we have already covered in depth Cassie and Jackie's sparring session. Their little trip to an underground MMA fight, whereupon they meet Frost, and she nearly gets killed, and they run away from the Black Dragon. Good old Jarek and Taja, we have not seen in ages. Bring us to this most recent chapter. Secret Origin of Kotal Khan. So, ages ago, the Golden Realm of Oshtek was ruled by proud warriors. This is from Kotal's perspective. He mentions that his father, Kotal Ketz, was the leader of this race, and they conquered all enemies. They became so wealthy and powerful, they forgot the meaning of defeat until the day they met Shao Kahn, Emperor of Outworld, and his champion Goro, Prince of the Shokan. And here, we see after seeing Kotal Ketz rip a heart from someone very, very gruesomely, we see the day that they met these two guys, and Khan and Goro are just straight up ripping shit up. Like, heads are flying, and, you know, just people ripped apart left and right. It, it really does seem that Goro and Shao Kahn took on, the, uh, took on this race of Oshtek single-handedly in Oshtek. Yeah. Can, can I um, mention something about the art real quick? You can. And this, this ties into um, a, a comment I wanted to make but forgot about Quan Chi's stage. Every time we see Shao Kahn's armor now, it's not what he wore in MK9. It's the proper samurai armor from the previous games. Damn straight it is. Yeah, that, and even, like, it's on display in Quan Chi's, uh, his, like, observatory or lab or whatever it's called, that stage. Like, there's, a there's like, a mantelpiece with, with his armor and, like, the broken helmet from the end of MK9. Except that broken helmet isn't the one with, like, the, the bull horns and the stone cornrows. It's the one from, like, versus DCU. <laughs> Like, the details are all different. Like, they keep retconning visual elements. I just I just think that's a weird thing to do. I mean, this armor looks a lot better than what he wore in MK9, and I've always been kind of bitter that, like, he doesn't wear the, the trailer version of his armor in that yeah. game. Yeah, Well, we see it one time in the opening. Yeah, yeah, it's the, 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 the Armageddon cutscene. He's wearing his versus DCU outfit. This, which, uh, which was also the outfit he wore in Deception. This one actually looks a lot like the Shaolin Monk's version, with the longer horns and the way his yeah, eyes are drawn. But, like, just... My, my point is, I think it's weird that, like, in-game they, like, retcon something visual from the very previous game. Like, you'd think they'd have stopped retconning stuff and decided to be consistent once they did the reboot. You'd think that. You'd be wrong. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, it, the, the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> Ret retcons have just become a kind of a way of life for this series. Something gets changed or altered almost every single game nowadays, it seems. It's like, we didn't like it, so let's pretend it wasn't what it was in the previous game. Even though everybody played that game and saw it, we can just lie to their faces. Even with the intro to MK9, when Sonya's in her MK9 outfits in the battlefield, I, I get why they did it, but it still kind of bothered me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, that I kind of chuck up to as, like, the one little hope that maybe the Armageddon we see at the beginning of MK9 isn't the one in MK Armageddon. Like, it's a different universe from the very get-go. Because, I mean, you gotta, you gotta consider, like, Armageddon ends with Taven winning. So, like, MK9 itself retcons the ending of Armageddon... And we don't Con see Taven, do we, in the no. intro, do we? Yeah, no. But, I mean, you see, like, the... You don't even see Blaze. Like, there's this big fire pouring from the top of the pyramid in one shot, but you never actually see, like, his body or anything. Like, Khan glows yellow, which I assume is the power of the prize, but... But I thought you had to beat Blaze to get the prize, right? Yeah, yeah, like, the well, they said on Twitter, like, Khan killed Blaze. That's the canon beginning of MK9. And, like, the, his fight with Raiden is after Blaze is dead. 
But it, it's just weird that, like, Taven and Dagon are nowhere to be seen, like, on the battlefield. Because, I mean, they, they stuck Kenshi's Deadly Alliance model on that staircase. They could have, and Bo Rai chose, they could have, you know, snuck a Taven in there somewhere. Just to be all like, oh, this this is why he didn't fight Blaze and Khan did. I don't know. That I'm just it gives me something to look right for, now. but... Well, was Sonya the only one? Was Nightwolf wearing his deception costume? Was was I don't know. Really no, everybody who is in they MK9 all had the MK9 model. MK9 costume. That's what I figured. Yeah, yeah, we're just reading too much into asset reuse here at this point. Except for Khan and Dark Raiden. So you can resume the comic now. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's 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 cool. All right, so from Kotal's perspective, he thought his father a coward that day, as Khan tells the individuals he's just beaten, in recognition to your obedience and service to me, you may keep your treasure. To which we cut to Kotal asking his father, you sacrificed our people's dignity for a gem? Kotal's dad, Mr. Katz, replies, it is not a gem, it is a portal stone. It is <laughs> time Katz. for you, like that. Mr. Katz. <laughs> It is time for you to fulfill the right of Earthwalk. Survive the harsh Earthrealm atmosphere, and you inherit my helm. So, inheriting, inheriting his dad's helmet is important to him. But he asks him, what good is your helm? You just relinquished it to a conqueror. And Mr. Katz, with a knowing look, tells son, if you'll hear no other advice, hear this. The people of Earth are locked in eternal war. You are not ready to join their fight. So, Kotal journeys into Earthrealm. He describes the experience as daunting, and we see him walk through deserts and snowy plains. He considers that his father was not warning him, but challenging him to conquer the place. And he journeys until he reaches the Amazon, a land which reminds him of home. He sees the native peoples and thinks to himself that this tribe stands no chance against him, an Oshtek warrior. He knows that instantly as well do the natives, because they run away from him. And he is not the only warrior that they encounter that day, because we have what appear to be a group of folks from the East, aka Europe, we have settlers here, who are in the process of abducting a poor child, taking water, and the child says, help me, somebody help me, translated from the original Mayan in a little footnote. The they didn't Mayan. expect the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody does. They really did not, thank they you. They never do. And they certainly don't expect the Oshtek Inquisition. <laughs> because the next thing that Kotel does is bash two of these guys' heads into each other. And I mean in. Like, they both just implode. He, and as he says, he was the only warrior on their side to these poor natives. He reflects on his mission. What if he was not here to conquer, but to save this tribe, as his father could not save theirs? And the natives, the native Mayans bow to Kotel in worship. Time passes, and he considers that his father had spoken true. War was constant for the tribe, against their own neighbors and against the men from the sea. So, yes, we see them, Kotal, helping the Mayans fight against rival tribes and against more people from Europe. And forged by battle, he becomes more than a warrior. He becomes a god. And we see him channeling some power, and it appears to be just sort of erupting, I'm guessing, from him, but we see it coming out of the sky and blowing up a whole It looks like he summons one of his uh, beams of sunlight and yeah, it, like, there you go. That's what shoots it into, a, like, a boat and kills all the conquistadors and yep. destroys the boat. Yeah, he nukes him. But, see, I think this is uh, the most interesting thing about the issue, the fact that uh, Kotal's not a god, he's just worshipped as one. Mm-hmm. Like, so he's not, like, the same species as Raiden and Fujin and Argus. At the very, very start of things, when we really thought that he was basically just a re like, an incarnation of a being from one of the MK9 uh, promo part, or was it an ending? Like, we thought he was, like, one of the elders um, to start off with. Yeah, it was one of those YouTube video bios. Yeah, that was it. He looked like one of the elder gods who was seen in, um, like, Raiden's or something. I guess we can, like, now officially retcon that explanation to maybe that guy was one of the gods of Kotal's people. I don't know. 
it, it is a shame in, in respect, but I'm as ready to see a brand new character as not, whether or not they are a god. Yeah, know? I mean, I, I don't. I'm not complaining about it. I think it's interesting. I, I'm. I am a little bummed that we're not learning more about the actual uh, pantheons of the realms, but I do think it's a cool story for him. So do I, and I think I mentioned this when we were offline or at some point recently that I have always personally wanted to see the outworld gods themselves ever since that uh, they mentioned back in MK3. Raiden cannot interfere as your room is now ruled by the Outworld Gods. We, we never see Outworld Yeah, gods. it's... In the later games, it seems like Outworld doesn't have any gods. Like, Khan yeah. used to be their god, and then he became king. Maybe he killed the other gods. I don't... Like, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm kind of wondering now if, the, like, Raiden, Fujin, and whatnot, if, if they're not retconned into being general gods for all realms, I have no idea. You think that they would mention gods of different realms? I don't think we've had a mention of a god from a different realm since, like, Ko Chow and, like, that deception uh, little place well, there. Well, Ko Chow was just, like, a legend. With, yeah. Like, all the demons worshipped this portal and thought it was a living god, but it was just a big stone structure. Silly demons. But yeah, like, the, the last actual god we've been introduced to was Argus, and before that it was the fucking cast of mythologies. <laughs> Even that, most well, of those were, guys aren't relevant. Yeah, there were references to the god of chaos as the creator of chaos realm, but he wasn't like given a name, and we don't know what he looks like, and so on. Maybe one day, maybe MKX, maybe Kotal is just not that guy, and there's someone else in there. Maybe I should stop hoping. <laughs> I do like that Kotal, or I feel like he's <laughs> unambiguously good. Like I feel like there's no neutral. I thought this character was going to be a dick when I first saw him. He seems really... He he still, uh, like, eats hearts, but he does have, like, very good guy motives. And a good guy background. Like, he doesn't look like he abused the natives. It looks like that's something that happened later, but... Yeah, no, like... Yeah, well, continue <laughs> with the issue. He just seems right. very lawful neutral, honestly. He seems like a very great character. He's very down to business when it comes to ruling, but he's he's kind of benevolent in a way. Yeah, he just it wants... doesn't sound like. Yeah, I'm just gonna say, as a lawful neutral character would be, he just seems like he wants what's fair for everyone, but he's not picking sides with it. He just wants, you know, his damn peace and quiet. But he's not gonna <laughs> set, you know, if, if 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 he feels like uh, the good, you know, the good guys are threatening him, he's gonna take them out. If he feels like the evil guys are threatening him. He's going to take well, them out. What he just bothers me is, place. like, in the last issue, it, he came across as a damn sight more honorable than either Sonya Blade or Raiden. Combined. And that's just plain out of character shit. I, it bothers me to no end that these are the heroes of the series and this is how they come off. I'm kind of cheering for, you know, I'm yeah, cheering for the like, con. I, I kind of want, like, there to be a, a war between Earth and Kotal's outworld and for Kotal to fucking win. <laughs> Because I feel like we'd be in better hands with him. I keep stumbling over here because Shadowloo has me saying Kotal now. I can't stop yeah. saying it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I just think that Kotal sounds better than Kotal. It might. I think I, see, I, I, think I like Kotal Kodal because his name is a differently spelled version of, like, Quetzalcoatl. You're Kotally like, right. Aztec <laughs> state god. Boom. I think of Kotal and then, and then I go to, like, the word total and I think of cereal. It doesn't work. For <laughs> yeah, but he's totally con. <laughs> That's what I think of. Oh, God. <laughs> he's well, total he, con. He is the total con. <laughs> I actually agree, Shadow. If you disagree, I agree. That's a paddling. <laughs> Kotal does sound better, but I, I just, I'm torn between two worlds now, and I'm trying to say both, and it's <laughs> fucking me up. <laughs> well, he uh, has a third name, the one the uh, the Mayans gave him. Yes. What was that name? You're uh, on that panel now, as a matter of fact. So, he continues to say, I taught the tribe to conquer their foes in the Oshtek way. In exchange, they gave me a new name, Buluk, the war god. And I just did a little bit of homework just now. Buluk Chubtan, actual Mayan god of war. Violence yeah, and yeah, sudden death. Yeah, that's accurate. Death. I looked that up, too. Yep, yep. I, I like, because it's consistent with, like, the Raiden's own history where he's been worshipped as uh, Zeus and Thor and the night wolf calls him Hayoka. That is something like, that they've been really good about doing lately. I gotta have yeah, them. Yeah. So, as their enemies dwindled, I grew restless and elected to return to Outworld, expecting my father's pride. 
So he re-enters the portal many years later. At this point, he's got his familiar headdress on with his helmet. Yeah, yeah, he looks like an adult now. Like, at the yeah. beginning of the comic, he looked like a teenager. And he has, so like, talk- short, curly black hair. He does. Like, he, he looks kind of, um... I don't know, kind of like a black guy, except, you know, his skin is bluish green. Yeah, he's like an African tribe member, just blue. At this point, he's also got the uh, little nose triangle things, whatever the hell you call Yeah, yeah the piercings. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's, 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 he's got the piercings, he's got the headdress, he's got uh, the, uh, the armor. He now looks like Kotal as we see him in the Kotal, as we see him in the game. Those piercings bother me. They look like they like take up his entire nostrils. Like, I wonder if he's just like breathing through his mouth now. Well, it's like, um, it's sort of like, you know, the ring in a bull's nose. Right, yeah, it's supposed to go it's through... It's just the... someone shoved a, a bone through his septum. Right, yeah. but, like, the way it's drawn, it looks like it just takes up everything. He's just a loud breather. <laughs> like, everyone's yeah, like, yeah. fucking, up oh, here comes Kotal Khan. Freaking hey, guys. Fucking... <laughs> 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 This guy over here. It's like he's like a group is talking. They see him coming. Like, oh god, here comes Cole. Don't mention the nose thing. Don't mention. <laughs> it's like he's about to sneeze and everyone's about to freak out. Very sensitive about it. <laughs> Bites it back. It's like, oh thank god. Anyways, continue. <laughs> so he steps through the portal to see his father, and his father tells him, "You've grown stronger, yet you disappoint." To which he replies, "Disappoint who, father? I protected the weak." And Ketz goes, you have doomed them. You are blind to the consequences of your actions. Return the portal stone to me. And at this point, Kotal takes no more shit and just shoves his dad against a rock. Leaves a nice little indent in it. He probably says, forgive my anger. Keep your helm, father. Now that I have my own, I will never surrender it. And he walks back to the portal home, back to Earth. I returned to my fallen Amazon tribe, but they had fallen in my absence. My, we defeated the men from the sea, but I had never considered the enemies in their blood. So his Mayan tribe is now lying dead all around, flies swarming them around them. And we can see it in kind of two panels here, an image of one man eating a heart and their blood cells being infested by some kind of virus. So that's exactly what happened. They ate from tainted men and they all died from it. Yeah, um, they, they doors and diseases, folks. didn't have the antibodies for those European diseases, which is historically accurate. Except for the part where they learned to eat hearts from a guy from Outworld. <laughs> so, that totally happened. Hey, Kotal. Uh, if Kotal uh, was there, would he have, like, given them fucking vaccines? What, what was his plan for that? I'm sure I, uh, he had, like, maybe those I, I think he whatever? would just paddle the germs. <laughs> so... We now go to the present day. Zunkara, Outworld, today. This, as we see, is now the perspective of Kotal Khan. He's been relating this to a massive gathering of people before him. Before him and around him, we can see two other members, apparently of his race, same blue skin and kind of Mayan-looking gear. Off to his left, we have Aaron Black standing around being all pimp with his arms folded. We've got Devor just below him, and behind him we have Reptile, who's kind of barely visible and very poorly drawn. <laughs> Properly colored this t- time, though. Properly colored. He is actually green. Poorly drawn, or is this the de-evolution of Reptile starting? <laughs> He's just, like, <laughs> turning no, more... Everybody's a little badly drawn. <laughs> There's barely... The art, the art in this issue, it's a different artist, and yeah, it's a little sloppy. It is, it is very... It's because it's in the background. A lot of the background characters have less variation, but Reptile yeah, just looks like yeah. arse. Like, I, I like the way the guy draws Koto, actually, but... yeah. He's, he, he's good with up-close shots. So, great. so he says, This was all long before Shao Kahn died and the Mad Empress Melina drove Outworld to the brink of disaster. Surprise, surprise, Melina done fucked up Outworld. Who didn't see that coming? Yeah. Before I deposed that illegitimate clone to restore the realm. Over the past decade, we have driven Melina's forces deep underground. Her threat to our empire is so reduced, we barely sense it. We may even forget she's there. This was my father's lesson. Even the Midas warriors are defeated by the smallest threats. We will hunt Melina and her co-conspirators. We will crush every rock they hide under, and we will eradicate all opposition to this empire, no matter how great or small. And everyone's all, Hail Kotal Khan! And the scene changes to a very familiar background from Deception, the Golden Desert. 
and our perspective chips to Reiko and Melina. Reiko starts with the Red Dragon have agreed to my... Our plan, Empress. So we already know who the brains of this organization is, folks. Yeah. Melina, Makes wearing sense. a nice little armored getup, says, Splendid, General Reiko, you are dismissed. She removes her mask, saying, We have everything we need. Everything but you. What do you say, my prince? Will you join me? Will Goro take revenge against the usurper? And she's being all, you know, fawny and I guess kind of cute in Melina's way. And he's got an arm around her waist and he's eating a big old feast. So, so very reminiscent of the MK movie. Yep. And he says, very well, Melina. You will restore the Shokan to our former glory. And in return, I will finish Kotal Khan. Dun, 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 dun. So she goes from cuddling with Reiko to letting Goro feel her up. Are we really that surprised? I guess, using been... what you've got. <laughs> It would have been funny if Baraka's sure doesn't like, have brains. If the, no. the drumstick was actually like Baraka's arm. <laughs> <Just like fucking. laughs> that would have added much to the scene. Tell your ideas appeal to Baraka me. And I wish to subscribe to your newsletter wherein Baraka dies and is eaten. <laughs> Current status delicious. <laughs> and that is the issue, folks. We so all learned likes, something uh, today. Who's like Emelina's new armor getup? It is really, really nice. The touch, the, 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 the touch that I love most of all is how she's personalized it a little bit, and she has like kind of a Shao Kahn skull on her belt. It's nice. Yeah. yeah I, I might, have might to call that. it armor so much is like just the the way her pants are drawn. They look like black leather with like panels or something. Flipping back over this thing, I'm looking more carefully. I don't know. I might have to be the minority here. But, I don't like Melina wearing pants. I don't. Yeah, think yeah. That's see, that good. kind of bothered me. Like we talk, we talk a lot about characters being too skimpy. Melina's yeah. the one who should be skimpy. And so, you like, know, I, like, I appreciate that they're going for pants with their characters this time, but not for Melina. <laughs> well, she's still guess... slutty too because she has that like the V of her. Pants goes pretty yeah, yeah, deep. They are yeah, really, it's low, really cut. low cut. She but has a bare midriff. Not, like, that doesn't things, look so. good to me, though. That's not, I, don't, I mean, it's it shallow, I know. What's up? You know, as far as things go, if it's an attempt to make her look regal, it's actually not that bad of an idea. I guess that, like this is as close as we're getting to like Melina Khan as a look. And that's true. It doesn't look bad by any means. Like It is It is a good look if you're going to make a conservative Melina. I just... I That... It's That's not Melina so, by definition. Yeah, I just I feel like Melina is very flashy and very because it's not even just a story thing to me. Melina's designs have always been very flashy and stripperish, and it, it looked cool to me. I I even like her MK9 costumes. I thought they both looked good, and I, I don't know. I I agree. The women should not look as slutty in MKX, but this is the first time it's ever looked contrived to me. Katana did not mm -hmm. look contrived when they made her more conservative. You know. I, I really like, like the puppy. Katana's pants. supposed to be conservative. Exactly. Uh, very. She has dignity. <laughs> yeah, Melina does Melina not. Melina have... should not have dignity. <laughs> yeah, she ain't holding back. She's got nothing to hide, you know. And, uh, and I, as I far don't... as like the idea of a Melina Khan costume, where are the big square shoulder pads with spikes on them? That's exactly. all I got for that. Sadly absent. <laughs> that would be a really good touch, though. Yeah. Uh, just leggings on Melina. I, I just, I mean, you don't even have to make it look slutty. Like, you could cover most of the leg. Or for all we know, her ass like... is completely exposed. <laughs> that that would be interesting. That would be kind of crazy. She's yeah, actually they, just they wearing be, chaps. They might, chaps. they might be assless chaps. That would be, that would okay. make it work for me. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait then. You can't I'll see her buns, it's true. The buns might change my mind. <laughs> mm, buns. Indeed. I, I, I want buns. that quote in, in text just printed. The buns might change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Someone make that a meme. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, again, this is going to sound shallow, but like everything above the waist looks like standard Molina to me. And everything below the waist looks like something completely foreign. And that's why I guess it's not gelling for me. 
Like it looks like classic Melina with with pants thrown on her. It it yeah, looks forced. The, to the me. pants are black, and the rest of his co- uh, the rest of her costume is uh, pink. So it's sort of like the the change in color scheme is a little jarring in that way too. Like half of her body is one color, half of her body is another. And maybe it it'll, it'll look better and more natural when we actually see the in-game model. Yeah, it, like I said, it doesn't we look never bad. Never really by know with the comic art because like we didn't recognize reptile at first. <laughs> Him being white. <laughs> God, what the hell? Funny to me. Maybe that's what the third issue cover is. Probably Melina. Hmm. Huh? They were just waiting that's to possible. reveal her. As like the, yeah. I do I do want to point out, uh, you, you asked what Kotal was going to do about the germs. Uh, well, he compares Melina to the germs, so apparently paddling is his answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... We haven't done a a good paddling reference in a while. We were due for a yeah. good one. Yeah, we we've been sort of letting it fall by the wayside as the black dragon live on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like now that Co- you know, Kotal's like <laughs> you were gonna say it <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> but at least like the fact that he's not nearly as evil as I thought he would be. Makes me wonder. Wait, this guy's working with a reptile. How does how does that function? Does that kind of make anyone go? Does that make anyone else raise an eyebrow or two? Well, no, I mean, no. clearly Re- it's reptile. a sign that um, this guy represents the downtrodden races of Outworld. Right. The the ones who Shao Kahn mistreated, and you know the the ones who are coming out of hiding because they were scared of him. Reptile falls under that category, and so does Farah, and so does Devora. I think it's a common theme uh-huh. that he's addressing here: is that he, like his you know allies, we don't know much about Aaron Black, but his other allies, they're all from these races that are extinct or were driven out of their you know Oppressed. whatever. Yeah, exactly. So. Clearly, he's like the savior for them, and he's, he's yeah. the champion of the little man. And Reptile is the littlest man in our world. <laughs> yeah, he is by far the smallest of the men. There is no one more downtrodden than he. It's a lonely life as Reptile. <laughs> it, and, it would be if he was willing to have sex, but <laughs> <laughs> well, would it be cool if Reptile is like not a complete dick now that he's hanging out with Kotal Khan? Would that be a more interesting it, Reptile? It would be nice to see him sort of grow into something a little less dude i will eat you mammal (laughs) (laughs) what the hell is that reptile laugh (laughs) that you're doing (laughs) stop that stop it reptile (laughs) but you know that that is a part of him he does enjoy mauling people he is a little bit sociopathic despite all those never be a good guy i just like to see him try a little Maybe they can channel it now. Maybe he's going to maul the right people. Back, I guess. If you take that anger and put it towards something that deserves to be mauled, I maybe it's a good thing. I, I don't know. Maybe the idea of Reptile being like just if he under Baraka, I wouldn't have a problem with him. No, I agreed. I don't know. I think Reptile is just Kotal's pet. He's a house animal. <laughs> well, that's he was Shao Kahn's pet, basically. He literally has the personality of a dog in Deadly Alive. Yeah, he's a dumb animal. <laughs> but you've got to realize, though, like, he's basically, like, he, he stands apart from, like, where, where Reiko and Goro are right now. Like, he made this choice. He knows Melina's not good for him. You've well, got to believe I, that, like, he I chose to get up and get the fuck out. he was ever really, you know, friends with anyone else in Khan's army. Like, he was just there because he had no other options like i i don't think he ever got along with anybody or feels any loyalty to them and i mean that's kind of reflected in his mk9 ending where when he gets his race back they kill the rest of the outworlders he doesn't give a shit i just i kind of believe that like you know maybe he was with melina and, and let the prologue said that originally Kotal was allied with Melina as her war chief. Yeah, yeah, there, there was when, a time when all these people were united under yeah. a single banner, and it was like, they realized Melina's a really shitty leader, so Kotal rebelled. And, and like, he, pro- he probably, like, made offers and, like, Reptile accepted. Like, you know, do you think she's honestly going to be any help, any, any help, any more helpful to you than Shao Kahn was? I can make this happen for you if you join me. 
That would do wonders for Reptile. Like, if Reptile actually went with Kotal because he's like, wow, this is a better deal. That would make Reptile redeemed so much in my eyes. It would be the first possible evidence of brain cell presence in God knows how many years. Exactly. Maybe ever. So do you think Melina's actually like a puppet uh, empress and like Rachel is actually the one that's calling the shots? That's actually one of the things I think I love the most about this because we actually get to see Reiko being a general. It's like, this is my well, yeah, uh, Re- Reiko's whole thing has sort of been being the smartest guy in the room ever since he was redesigned in Armageddon. Yeah. Like, there's that one cutscene where he talks to Taven and it's like the best scene in Conquest just because Reiko's dialogue is so good. Like, he just really comes off as, like, very, like, intelligent and well-mannered and sort of uh almost regal like he's just his posture with his one hand behind his back and just he really comes off as like i mean they try to sort of push quan chi now as this the guy with the most like the the smartest sounding guy in the room like he's got this tone of voice that's just oozing know it all Reiko had that first like back in back in the 3d games Quan Chi's voice was just I'm the deepest sounding guy you know he didn't you know sound like such a fucking smart ass and that's that's what I always sort of liked about Reiko so to see that he's sort of he's basically the one pulling Melina's strings because it's not like she has two brain cells to rub together Uh, you know, I appreciate that. It must burn to know that he can never wear that helmet outright and it belongs to her. <laughs> and well, she doesn't even wear the helmet. So that's kind of stink. Quan Chi fucking stole it. <laughs> Put it up on his mantle. Ass. Mine, bitch. <laughs> I wanted that. <laughs> Actually, hey, there you go. They they do mention in Armageddon that uh, Reiko dislikes Quan Chi immensely. Yeah, because he stole he's his just, helmet. He's, he's got beef. Like everybody this is who why. served Quan Chi grows to hate it at some point or another. Yeah, that is not and good management. Serena's entire character, more or less. Uh, Quan Chi is kind of like the Lumberg of Mortal Kombat. No one really likes Quan Chi, yeah. but they have Yeah. To. I'm going to need you to go on and become a wraith for me and abandon your former life. On Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll need you to be a wraith for me on Sunday, too. Nah, yeah. Hey, Serena, what's happening? I think you stole my helmet. I believe you stole my helmet. Wait, okay. you burned the castle <laughs> down? That's I'm burning this entire place down. That's, that's the last draw. <laughs> I'm just going to hijack the throne the from Melina. Uh who the God, fuck is clipping down. their nails? That's Maybe me, I'll sorry. Just conquer all of that world. You've been clipping your nails for ten minutes? I have many nails. How many? <laughs> There's at least twenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> what? At least twenty of them. You sh- Not for real. I'm but done. Hold on, let me get my electric... They have all kinds of weird shit going on it's up cool, there. I'll just get my electric Biologic. razor out. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> <laughs> Start mowing your lawn. <laughs> yep, <Yeah>, sure. <laughs> Enough about me. Back to Reiko. Fuck Reiko. No, I'm just kidding. I hope he's in the game, by the way. I wonder if he's one of the DLC characters. It's possible. I'm if he's not on the main know. roster, you could I feel be like, DLC. I feel like the two DLC characters of the returnees coming in the pack are probably going to be MK9 ones, though, that don't make the cut. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Shang Tsung, but- maybe? But with that said, I definitely expect more than just four characters. That's just the season pass. So I maybe for well, the next batch of with characters. With 170 people working on the goddamn game, I would sure hope so. Yeah, they're not going to do just four again, I wouldn't imagine. They they realized they had a lot more demand than that for MK9, and they only planned for four. So they gave a six in Injustice. So I, I at least expect six for MKX. Plus, they want to make that the, money. The DLC <laughs> will probably be like Cabal at Cyrax possible or smoke and cyrax or something like that it's i definitely see the the more popular characters that don't make the cut but yeah i would love to see something like 
someone like a Raiko or Fujin if they don't make it. I yeah. I'd like to yeah. see it. I ex- I'm still expecting at least one or two of them in the damn game itself. So let's just hope that's the case. Smoke and Tarks make a lot of sense to me. Cyrax big with the twenty players. Smoke big with the story buffs. A lot of people fucking play Smoke online, so <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, see, yeah, the thing about Smoke is DLC too. is I, I would just be bummed that it means that he doesn't get like screen time and story mode to explore the Inenra thing. Right. Yeah. That's, same here. That's what yeah, disappoints me. I think he will, me, though. I Cyrax. still think he's in the game. I think they're both I'm, in the game. I'm I'm still convinced to this day that Smoke is that guy that you can see Co- that you can see Kotal slamming in that little war god. Uh, Agreed. Animation. It just it doesn't look like anyone else. It doesn't look like anyone yeah. at all. Like he's got steam coming off him, and it's clearly not Sub Zero. It's pretty darn gray, and yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure that I see like long hair there. Looks like an emaciated wreck of a wraith, but it looks like Smoke could look. I like how oh. you broke that up. Um, yes. <laughs> well, any other thoughts before we go into the uh, Shiva retrospective? Shiva was the pick, huh? I, <laughs> I believe so. Is that right, Smoke? Yeah, let's go with Shiva. All right. Shiva it up. Then uh, we'll, start the, we'll start the retrospective. Who wants to start us off? Why don't you start us off? You're the guest. Go for it. You know All the right. drill. Yeah. So, um... I always liked Shiva for the untapped potential, and I think, like Razor, um, I see that in a lot of characters that kind of get shit on, um, where like they don't get a lot of attention in, in the community, or like the developers just kind of like throw them in there because they have to, not because they have anything interesting to say. Um, I wasn't like too big on her uh, initially when she was in MK3, or like I first played with her in UMK3 on the uh, Genesis. But like the more I thought about it, and like some of the um, like some of the story bits that she got here and there, uh, really got me interested in in her, and especially with like the uh, the war between the Shokan and the Centaurs. Um, and like the yeah, the ending to MK9, or like she was ending to MK9, really kind of like got my 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 head turning, and like this could be a really great character if they just like spent a couple of more. Like, just a little bit more time, like, developing maybe, like, a civil war between her and Goro. Like, I always pitched it as, uh, like, the Shokan, like, value honor above all else. Like, you know, that's, like, you know, Goro says it, like, she, uh, she was main reason for, like, or, like, when Jade, uh, I think it's Jade when she comes into the, to the, the tower to save Kitana. Uh, she's like, don't you want her to re- regain her honor? And like, in this case, it'd be through execution. But like, uh, yeah, that's yeah, a- it's like it, she, you know, did something to dishonor herself. So you know, throw yourself on a sword, and you'll, you're like, yeah. commit seppuku, and that's how you get it back. Yeah, that seems like that seems like the Shokan way. Yeah, and I feel like after Goro's kind of like heel turn and MK uh, deception, after I guess Noob almost killed him. Was that what it was like? Noob, noob uh, Saibot. Yeah, yeah, it was Noob Saibot. Yeah, in the tournament edition. In in Deadly Alliance. Yeah. yeah. There was a war between, like, the Kitan and Goro army and Kano's army before the Deadly Alliance killed Khan. And that was where, like, Goro, at least we thought he died, and it was it was Noob Saibot who did the killing blow. Yeah, and, like, uh, somehow Goro escapes out of that or whatever. Um... But I thought it would have been cool. Like, and after he, like, he turned, I thought it would have been, like, the last straw for Shiva. You know, th- like, I actually had no idea that she was dead at this point. But I thought it would have been cool if she, uh, like, like after he, after Goro goes back in league with Shao Kahn, I thought it would have been cool. It would have been cool if Shiva was, like, fuck you. You're trying to sell our race back to the guy who, like, uh, values the, the centaurs more, more, than, more than us. I'm taking... Uh, I'm taking those who will follow me, and I'm leading them to uh, to greatness. Or like, she doesn't want to follow Goro, and she's like trying to uh, gain support. And like, I think her uh, MK9 ending really gave a character to where she becomes the queen. She like, she's the one that brings the Shokan to salvation. And I thought that would have been cool uh, to see explored further if if um like a Shokan civil war ever happened. Yeah, I could see that. The um. I always thought, like, in terms of if there were a Shokan Civil War, it would be more interesting if it was, like, Goro's side versus Kintaro's side, because I like the, uh, the sort of 
the ethnic minority element to Kintaro and the that they really went into it in MK9 with the um well they sort of with the meant leak. to go into it cuz those bios didn't make it into the game but they were yeah. in the the demo leak the the but, idea that um Kintaro's uh you know his people are like a there's like a caste system and the the tiger guys are on the bottom and uh I think we're going to see that in the comic so I'm sort of excited for that like they've talked about uh Kintaro leading a civil war or something. And, um, like, as far as Shiva goes, the thing that I think, like, I do like the idea of her as a leader for her people, but I think, like, that role sort of worked better where in the original MK3, Goro was missing and presumed dead. Like, I don't know that the two of them would have conflict with each other. I feel like they'd be on the same side because they do have similar ideas of, like, honor and sort of... Before I, I Goro... Think... Before Goro was depicted as a more heroic guy in MK uh, Gold and Deadly Alliance, Shiva had that personality in MK3. Right, which I'm saying, like, after, like, I, like, because I didn't know that Shiva got killed by Kano, apparently. Uh, yeah. I, I thought that, what do you call it? I thought it would have been cool, because, like, Goro basically turns back to Khan, and this is after Khan basically brings the centaurs up as, like, his. Second in command, he favors them above like all all yeah. of the other ra- races, right? So, I thought it would have been cool if she was like she saw that and she sees that, and like, uh, like, like yeah, like she saw that and she would have um said fuck this, I'm out. So like, and she would take like those who like would agree with her and like either start her own tribe or like it would erupt into a war. Yeah, see that. That would make sense to me, because it always felt out of character to me that in Deception, Goro sided with Khan. I mean, even even if Khan was the one who saved him from death, they'd still established so many times that uh, Khan is the wrong side to serve on, and the Shokan don't really like him, and they know he doesn't respect them and all this stuff. So it's like, I sort of felt like Goro was dishonoring himself, and that's something he'd never do. Yeah. The The thing is... At least in the 3D era, era, it felt like they didn't, you know, they kind of looked at Shiva the same way they now look at Suhao and Dramin, because, like, they didn't just kill her off in Deadly Alliance Conquest. They had they, Kano kill her off. In Deception Conquest, she's, like, the only character from a past game who has no lines. Like, her only appearance is lying on the floor in a building in the Nether Realm. <laughs> uh, oh, that's right. So harsh. Um, but yeah, in terms of, um, at least that's what I wanted to see her go story-wise. Uh, gameplay-wise, yeah, I liked, uh, obviously it's MK9. Um, yeah, I know that not a lot of people play her, but I, I, I think she's fun, like, just to, uh, just to mess around with. She's fun when you're doing just teleports. Just the teleports. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Getting my favorite look for Shiva. Teleport, teleport. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, the way people, the way that the body kind of slides underneath her, like in the jerky animation of it. My uh, like as much as I like the uh, the slingshot bikini, I kind of like my favorite look for Shiva is her alternate. I think that looks so badass on her, with like the war paint, and, like the long braid, and like the chains around her torso. It looked pretty cool. So I would say that's probably my favorite look for Shiva. Uh, my favorite fatality of like the three and a half she's had. Uh, is probably the, uh, the skin rip, the, the flaying. Uh, it was done well in MK, in MK3. Like, you don't see a lot of people with that, with that sprite animation where the skin just gets peeled off. And I liked it really, I, I actually liked the way they did it in, in, uh, MK9. So that would probably be my pick for, uh, favorite Shiva fatality. Alright, cool. Um, I'll just throw in my thoughts real quick on Shiva. As a character, I've never really cared for her, honestly. She's, she's, she falls into the category of the trilogy characters that I don't care for, which there's not many of them, but she just happens to be in there. Unfortunately, um, I don't dislike her as a character. It's just She's just one that I've never really cared for. Uh, so I don't really have much like story thoughts on her or where I'd like to see her go. Um, but as far as like gameplay-wise, once again, didn't really care for her gameplay, but... Appearance-wise, I really did like her in MK9. 
her appearance. I, I did like her alternate, the one that you were talking about with the war paint and everything. That one looked okay. And favorite fatality wise, man, the one in MK9 where she's just using their hands to clap at the end. I, I love that one so much. It's so funny. <laughs> especially because so it, it, it's so creepy too. Like, it is creepy. Just, it gives her a bit of character. If you don't, yeah. if you don't press start and you don't continue right away, she just keeps clapping, and I think that's just like the creepiest freaking thing. It's it's definitely <laughs> I, I memorable. Think what makes it really creepy is like how uh, her model looks so weird and like unnatural, and that animation just adds to it. It's sort of like it's like comparing her character to all the other characters in the game is sort of like comparing live action to claymation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've always been so fucking weirded out by claymation. I get that same <laughs> sort of being surprised in claymation just did not mesh well with you. I'm making a mental note. Claymation surprise if you really want to fuck with Razor. If I can find yeah, claymation yeah, yeah. jump put, scares, oh my put god. Put the California raisins in the crypt and I will <laughs> But yeah, that 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 fatality is lots of fun. It's very memorable and iconic, in my opinion. Not iconic as in like it's really obviously it's it's in MK9, so it can't really be iconic in that way. But I feel like in the long scheme of things, that one is just absolutely hilarious and really cool and just really well done. So I like that she just has her hands behind her head and she's just clapping with her other arms. That's perfect. That's, that's the other thing. She's like overtly sexual, like even more so than Mal- I think in a, in a, than Melina in a lot of ways. Like she's like. She's got four hands and she's just rubbing, uh, rubbing all over herself and like, uh, in both. Yeah, her wind I, pose. I love her wind pose where she's like pose, pose, and then rub down. Yeah. <laughs> she's got like a she wears like a banana hammock. She's like right. wearing like a mankini all over. It's crazy. Slave bikini. I'm convinced that <laughs> More she of a would clam be complete... hammock. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> She'd be completely naked if uh, N- the NRS could get away with that. Like, like Shokan don't seem to like give a damn about uh clothing they just wear it as a as a courtesy to everybody else the yeah. star trek ferengi thing the girls aren't allowed to wear clothes right oh yeah that well, pretty much wraps up my their race is, their, their skin is more like scales so i don't know that they even need clothes right <laughs> honestly a courtesy that would be cool um, i'm gonna shoot my thoughts in here now <clears throat> shiva i like her and I'm I sure don't like the terminology the you used for that. I'm just going to say like that. Her. I like her. Shiba, she's, um, I like her. I'd like to shoot my thoughts in here real quick. <laughs> I do her. <laughs> I'm going to shoot my thoughts into Shiva. Yep. <laughs> Something. No, um... I'm she's... Shoot. Damn it, the, sorry. I can't she's like the T-Hawk uh, of MK. The, the architecture of that phrase. <laughs> shoot my thoughts. <laughs> I'm going to shoot my thoughts into my listeners right now. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all, oh, all over. <laughs> Anyways, Shiva continues. <laughs> Shiva is the T Hawk of Mortal Kombat. It's the exact same thing that basically happened with T Hawk in in, in, uh, in Street Fighter Four and all of its incarnations. You know, no one else is around, and let I me mean, not sorry. Everyone else is around. You kind of expect them to be there, and when they're there, very few people care. Yes, yeah, she's only in the game because it's a remake of Trilogy. Pretty right? much. She's never been an extraordinarily popular character. Like, Jade's got more fans than Shiva does. And it's a fucking shame. There were home versions of Ultimate that Shiva's not in. Yeah. <laughs> Out of all the characters, like, Ultimate, on, on SNES and Genesis, to accommodate all the extra guys, plus Rain and Noob Saibot, who weren't even in Arcade Ultimate, playable anyways, they cut Shiva out. She and was in the Genesis version, I remember, because that's when I first played her. Well, even in MK9... Genesis MK3. And even but, even in MK9, it pretty much came down to who's getting the last spot, Shiva or uh, Rain. <laughs> pretty much. So she's more popular, or not more popular, but apparently NetherRealm Studios found her more... Probably because of story mode, obviously. But and she's a female yeah, well, character. Well, they didn't even use so her few. right in story mode, and I'll, <laughs> I'll get into that when it's my turn, but... Uh, yeah... Ultimate Genesis and SNES, like, if, if you went into their endurance mode and you, like, hit L and R to do random select for, like, your, uh, your your characters, you could actually land on a question mark. And when you went into the battle with that thing, it would be Shiva, but it'd be all, like, invisible and glitchy. They took her out of the game on the home consoles, but they didn't take all of her data out. And if you hit her or she hit you, the game will freeze. Thanks, Shiva. 
Um, I like to use her every now and then in MK3. She also had kind of like a ballet gone wrong atmosphere about her special moves and whatnot. Like, she had the single most damaging auto combo in MK3. High punch, high punch, low punch, high kick, high kick, low kick, back and high kick. And the thing would do like 43 fucking percent damage. Like, she was actually one of the more dangerous characters, if I remember right, before, like, Cyber Smoke was unlocked and people figured out how to use Cabal. I remember, I remember Shiva getting a lot of love in the very early days of MK3. But, um, she's never made that much of an impact uh, in terms of story, because I guess, you know, we always gotta have Goro around, and where, the, where Goro's concerned, there's, I guess, sadly not much room for Shiva. But I think that her MK9 ending was, again, probably the best that she ever gotten. I hope that now that we're seeing a scenario where in MKX, uh, Edenia or maybe Outworld are being kind of evacuated into Earth Realm as we speak and people are s setting up refugee camps, how wonderful would it be to have like Australia belong to the Shokan? Do you think they gave her Australia because that was where the game wasn't getting released? Because I was, yeah, yeah, I would like to think that. It's like, fuck you, maybe. Australia. Maybe. <laughs> the Shokan can have your stupid country. <laughs> Um, that aside, if not, I could they, actually they can survive really the see giant it. spiders and the dingoes that steal babies and the drop bears. <laughs> Dingo, eat your baby. I could really see her as being allies with Kotal. I can't see her following Melina of her own volition. Mm. I, I mean, I, I would actually hope that at some point in the future, we actually get to see... Shiva and Goro have a little one-on-one yeah, -on -one go. Are, are you actually... Guy like Goro would fucking back Melina. <laughs> I, I, I want her to go up to him. He hates Kotal. I want her to go up to him and go, are you an idiot? She has no honor for the first off. Second off, she's psychotic. Are you really desperate to grasp for straws? We know we're seeing Kintaro in there at some point, so... I don't know. I think, I think a Shiva comic appearance is not long off, and I'm hoping that good things will come for her when it is time. I don't want to see her just killed off for shock value. That'd be a disappointment. She may be no one's, or very few people's favorite character, but it's a waste to just kill her and leave her on the ground in the nether realm like the way they did a couple of years ago. This is where we fast forward like three weeks from now and then insert the comic picture where she's going to be dead. <laughs> God, I hope not. The, she, she is introduced already dead. The only panel is her lying on the floor. Just like five knives in her or something. Uh, so favorite costume? Far and away, MK9 original. Slight update to the MK3. I've always loved the slim bikini. Not too flashy, but a little Clam flashy. Slam with the term Clam, Clam Hammock. Clam Hammock. <laughs> Favorite fatality? I'm agreeing with Cyborg here. It's the arms. It's hilarious. And it adds just that little bit of character to her. And, you know, she she has a little bit of fun. It's hilarious. It's wonderful. So MK, I think the MK9, truth be told, if... She didn't have the larger role to play. And if she did, again, act as a jailer in a deception reference, it gave her, you know, it established that sense of honor for her, and it gave her a little bit of a sense of humor. All things told, I think MK9 did Shiva a few favors, and I hope to see her again someday. And that's all. Oh, right. no. Yeah, oh, yes, it is. Yeah? Yes, it is. No, that, that's the, okay. that, that, that is all for the show gone. <laughs> okay. Never mind. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, I don't like Shiva. And I don't want to see her back. But believe it or not, I actually do have a lot of good things to say about Shiva. Uh, Shiva arrived at a time where there was no playable Shokan yet. There was no... Goro was never playable. Kintaro was never playable. So when I first saw her previewed in a magazine from K3, I was like, oh my god, we're finally going to get a Shokan character who's playable. And it's, it's kind of badass. So there was a real novelty with her when she came out. Uh, I like the character a lot. Um, we see Shiva is really slow and kind of overbearing in MK9, but you had a run button in MK3. So that was daunting as fuck when you have this hulking bitch coming towards you at a million miles per hour and comboing you with these, you know, relatively decent chain combos. I, I thought it was really cool. And I she didn't age well because of that, because now that there's Goro being playable... Now that she returns in Armageddon, where you have not one but two playable Shokan warriors, the the novelty's not there anymore. She's not yeah, special. Yeah, she's always the lesser than compared yeah. to the guys. That's and just sort of what naturally happens because they came first and have bigger fan bases and 
They're Unless, sort of what yeah. people picture and want to play as when they say, I want to play as a Shokan, where she's built like a regular character. And that was, I mean, that's the reason they created her. Like, they, you know, they said, well, everybody wants to play as Goro. We can't give them Goro because he's eight feet tall and he moves like this and he's not balanced. Let's let's invent a female one because they would be shorter and more like the rest of the characters. And I always liked that because it gave them a chance to explore the race, which, you know, they've never done with the fucking Tarkatans. Like, Shiva mm. is, you know, we need a Shiva for Baraka. Yeah, and she's still some ideas about that actually. Well, I'm you know here for a second and just no, say definitely. It. Whenever, whenever you your game has a Shokan moving slowly, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, I hate that. agree. I despise definitely that. Agree. Goro was lightning fast. Katara took giant strides. Shiva was quick and graceful in her in her move execution. And this ongoing trend of having sh of having the Shokan fall into this category of big, dumb, lumbering brute is terrible. Yeah, yeah, that was always the cool thing about the Shokan is they subvert your expectations. They look like a big, slow, dumb monster, but they're intelligent and fast. And that carried on with Shiva. Like, Shiva was fun to play with. I, she When MK3 first came out and Ultimate wasn't even, you know, an idea in the minds of the fans yet, Shiva was popular. A lot of people were playing her. Um, she was a lot of fun to play as, even. You know, the stomp. We finally got to do the stomp. That wasn't possible for her. And like like you said, Razor, we got to see a female Shokan, which again, I mean, I was wondering what that would look like. We never saw anyone else from the race, and other than Kintaro, and Kintaro looks totally different from Goro. So there was a real allure to this character, and but time did not do her well because she has she has no gimmick anymore. I don't even want to call it a gimmick because it was a sincere, positive quality before. She has no selling point anymore. She, yeah, she was sort of the novelty wears off, and then it's like, well, we've seen that. We know what female show can look like now, so we can move on. And because she's slimmer and not as big as Goro or Kentaro, she doesn't even have that boss element to her that makes Goro so special. It's like, oh, I'm playing as yeah. one of the bosses. She doesn't even come close to that. But at the same time, I thought that also worked in her favor. Shiva in MK3 even though she's taller than most of the other characters, she still looks like a very athletic woman. She still has like an, a, a feminine body that's very muscular. Uh, and Armageddon, that wasn't the case. In Armageddon, she's extremely bulky. And she had, like... But she so looks... is everybody else. Yeah. yeah. Shiva was the worst Shiva. Yeah, well, you know, what's funny. I like her like costume, the just not yeah. her proportions. The red and the gold looks great, but she is so... F she has, like, Ving Rhames thighs, and she has, like... <laughs> the texture in her body looks like potato I'm gonna skin. fuck you till you love me. <laughs> 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 That's what her face tells me when I look at it, you know? And, um... <laughs> even in MK3, she had very beautiful feminine eyes, and that's probably attributed to the fact that she was played by a woman. She wasn't rendered in 3D. And that kind of carried into Armageddon, but the bulky body kind of distracted or subtracted from that. So I'm not anti Shiva. Once the novelty wore, wore off, they could have, you know, redeemed the character or not redeemed the character. They could have developed the character. They could have given her other qualities, but there was no time. The next game after Ultimate MK3 was MK4, and MK4 gave no shits about the MK3 characters, which is unfortunate. Even then, I still would have picked a lot of characters over Shiva, but. That was her one chance, unfortunately. And, and and for other characters, it wasn't their one chance. They were coming back eventually. For some of them, it took eight years. Smoke was very popular, and it took him eight years to come back, as did Noob Saibot. Well, Noob Saibot was an MK4, what am I saying? As it did for, say... God, what's another good example? Um, well, you guys know. Everyone here knows. Cabal. But, Cabal, Cabal, precisely. That's a very good example. Extremely popular in UMK3. Played all the way till the end of the game's run, and it took forever to get him back. Ermac. Ermac. Ermac was considered a palette swap, so for him it was a little more of a struggle. I think Cabal yeah. was higher on the waiting list, but they all got to... They all caught the same bus, thank God. <laughs> so yeah. I love them er both, for sure. Ermac was nice enough to get... He, he, he was lucky enough to get a little nod in Deadly Alliance. He had to wait as long as Smoke did before he came back, but... Yeah. They reminded us he was there, and that was what mattered. Precisely. Nightwolf Let's took a long ass time. Who? Nightwolf. Oh, Nightwolf. Yeah. Oh, Nightwolf's. 
I mean, Nightwolf's hard because he already kind of had a stigma as being one of the not as cool characters in MK3. I liked him, but I know a lot of people didn't. It's kind of, he kind of had the like, same thing as Stryker, unfortunately. Uh, that wasn't so with Cabal. And unlike Cabal, Cabal's return was not a redemption. For Ermac, Ermac's return was a redemption. He had something to prove. He needed to be unique. He needed to show the world that he was not a palette swap anymore. Cabal, not so much. Nightwolf? I, I never, like when Deception was announced, I didn't expect Nightwolf to come back, and when he did, I mean, I was I was overjoyed. But Shiva, that... Zindel, and Jade, really, the everybody who was introduced in the MK3 era, except for the cyborgs. Yeah, well, Sindel did have fans though. That's another difference. Like Sind- a lot of people really did like Sindel. I mean, I won't mention names, but some people like that's their thing. That's what they're sexually attracted to. <laughs> Not gonna point anyone out here, but but anyway, yeah, like it's that's the, um, uh, Shadowloo. I will point disgusting. him out. <laughs> I'll take that finger and I'll turn it one eighty. You know, if myself, if our gentle listeners haven't like noticed at this point, I mean, Shiva does it for me. Sindel does it for me. Uh, if it has legs, basically, <laughs> but that's for another time and place. Well, I, I love. Sindel. I like the boob. <laughs> <laughs> How do I see more of the boob? I'm gonna let it fuck me till I love it. It won't take very long. <laughs> let us worship the boob lest it become angry. <laughs> Just one of the boobs, not both. Just one. Just one you boob. Know, <laughs> you know, actually, Tab, did you say earlier that Shiva was played by a woman in MK3? I think she, so. That's no, my guess. No, no, she was a claymation it, model like Goro. It, 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 oh, it was, really? It was a stop motion figure. Oh, okay. Well, that is a very and, and a feminine that stop motion figure. And somehow sexier than the 3D models. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Was the, the Versus screen was a female model, though, wasn't it? I don't think so. I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at I, the figure right I now. I could have sworn in one of those. Uh, yeah, the, I thought like when they were covering uh, MK3 in the uh, Deadly Alliance retrospect. Right, right. Day, it was, there like, was a female model there, for sure. I could have sworn I remember seeing a female model in that attire, in the makeup and everything. Oh. Yeah, I thought so too, like worst. in front of the red screen, right? Yeah, or yeah. The, maybe for yeah. the picture, but the game was stop motion. That's possible. Okay. I'm just saying. I know yeah. for the the versus screen, it must have been. But you that's, know, like that's fair. It's still a very athletic, effeminate body to me. You know, like for example, like the eyes, very effeminate to me. Now, if you look at MK9, she looks like a pissed off Glenn Close, and Glenn Close is already <laughs> not attractive. Oh so my So she loses God. a lot of points. You're a fan. Oh my. You're not into the Borg Queen? <laughs> ah, you're making my boner go away now. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I, I don't mind Shiva. MK4 was the time to give her something else, to give her something other than the novelty, which had an expiration date, unfortunately. I, I don't dislike the character. She She's just so low on the priority list, you know? I... I, I I don't really know what else to say. I know she has fans, especially when MK9 came around. A lot of people really, they have a strong affinity for Shiva. Like, really strong. They, they love that character. I, it's similar to the principle behind Melina fans. They want to, you know, yeah. go for the weirdest looking chick. And be all like, that's what I'm attracted to. That's so hot. And yeah, fuck conventional beauty. I'm not this sure how I many miss. of it is, how much of it is genuine and how much of it is being hipster. Well, yeah, that's yeah. that's definitely a a part of it. Is there 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 comes a point where a character is so hated that they become likable again. Like the Striker treatment is the is the biggest example of that. I mean, Striker was shit on for so many years, all the way up until Armageddon and everything, and they finally brought him back for Armageddon and MK Nine. They they brought him back a lot better than before, but for the longest time, people shit all over him to the point where people that are like, "Hey guys, you know he's actually not that bad." And then he I gets like his Chief fans. O'Brien. I mean that that, <laughs> that happens all the time. It just one good showing. All right, for the Shiva fans, who would you prefer Shiva over? You guys. That's like, a good point. Seriously, because I'm th- I'm thinking about it right now. I would take Shiva over Sindel as a character. No, I disagree uh, yes. with that. I'm a I huge, would. huge Sindel I'd take fan. Over, I take over Melina just because just for the simple fact that she doesn't have a bear trap for her face. I might take her over Kano. I might. I'd have to think about that. I'd take but... her. I'd take her over Mocap, um, Darius, and Dairu. That's probably about it. 
No, I I and don't Cobra like Darius or Dairu, but I'd rather have. Dar- I feel like there's somewhere to go with those characters. Well, that's fair. I mean, I guess if they were redesigned, they could be better. But and there's a big that difference the- too. Like with Striker, when Striker came back, he was cooler. Although honestly, I never minded the old Striker. But Striker was greatly right. improved in MK9. Yeah. Shiva was not. Shiva looked worse to me. So it's it's like I'm. There's no room, Shiva. I'm sorry. There's nowhere. We have no room on the boat. Uh, you know, I, I I would take Shiva over Tanya because I do I do not like Tanya at all. I like her design in Deception. Like in Deception, yeah, I like true. the design a lot. I thought point, the hair was really cool. Point is, Shiva's probably going to be in a lot of people's bottom ten. Yeah, no matter where you exactly. put her, she's probably in there for a lot of people. Unfortunate, but true. She's no one's. Even the people who really like Shiva, that's not your favorite character. You're not. <laughs> yeah, she's not your, your favorite. favorite Don't lie. She's not your yeah. favorite. <laughs> like when you root for a character, you get like three. And everyone after your bot top three, that's too bad. I'm not counting that as a vote anymore. Like Lee May, I will count as a vote for myself. Like I take Shiva over for Lee Razor. May. I, I would also take Shiva over Lee May. I know. Sorry, dude, I know. I I well, take no, that, Lee May. No, let me one. let me clarify. You, I would take Shiva <laughs> over Deadly Alliance Lee May. I would not take Shiva over Deception ending Bride. Lee May. <laughs> I'll I'll take I, that. I, from now. I like the one who wants Onaga's dick. <laughs> That's the I approve of. Well, Shiva might want it too. We don't know. Well, I don't want to see yeah, that. But if I mean, he'd actually. I don't want the cameras on when that happens. <laughs> I don't. Think it would so. be appropriate for Shiva to go after Onaga. I, That's what I like about Lee May doing it. Is it doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I mean, you guys all know hype about Lee May. I like the idea of a of a protege, and I I think I, I like her. I like what she accomplished in the span of Deadly Alliance and Deception. Shiva did accomplish something good, and it's important to note that she did defeat Motaro, and that counts as something huge. That yeah, was yeah. a very important figure in the MK3 game. She so, was, I mean, yeah. She was a very was important that? stepping stone to Kano doing the only cool thing Kano's ever done. Yeah, and I mean, I always thought in my mind, like, one reason why she turned against Khan. I mean, in, in the story, in Conquest, we're told, it's because she found out Khan was turning against the... the, the she was basically... The show cons were going to get fucked when everything was said and done, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Just... Yes. so I always thought, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, we, we talk about, like, where was Goro in MK3? Maybe she found Goro, and maybe Goro was imprisoned after his failure in MK1, and he's been chilling in a dungeon for God knows how long, and she didn't know about that. And when she found out, she freaked the fuck out. That's what I thought might have happened. And that would be interesting to me. And it would be interesting for Goro, where Goro is the one saying, Khan is an asshole, don't trust this guy. He has nothing good to offer. I would have liked to have seen something like that. And I, I don't think of Shiva as pure evil, just like I don't think of Goro as pure evil. So I, I do. Absolutely not. They're honorable. Yeah, exactly. They have a code. And that's, that's I mean, it can create problems, but that's something you can fix. Or, or you could, again, you could channel that code into something positive. So I, I don't really want to see Shiva again. I don't think there's any room. I, I don't mind the character. I don't hate the character. There's not many characters I do hate. Um, I hate Kano, but I would still take Kano over Shiva, I think, if I really sat on it long enough. I, what I, if I Kano like... was played by Deathstroke from the Arrow? Oh, that'd be tight. Like, that would be... Actually, that'd Mano be really casting. Yeah, he's already missing that. the eye, fictionally speaking. So yeah, I mean that would yeah, be yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, we uh, this came up in the stream before. I think he's a good pick, but he's too handsome. I said, um, I'd I like, like handsome see, Kano. Uh, I think uh, even uh, Kano, the Billy Mays look was like the best thing that ever happened to him. That's me though. I like haired, bearded Kano. I, I, I like the to- uh, what's his name? Trevor Goddard. Yeah, yeah. Trevor yeah. Goddard. Yeah, that that's the Kano that stuck with me. Yeah, so. agreed. Rugged, handsome. Yeah, before I can't, I can't remember yeah. his uh, name. The transporter. That guy? Jason Statham. Oh, uh, Jason Statham. That's a Jason Statham. See, I think he should play Kano. You know, he, he wouldn't be ball. bad either. He actually yeah. he's got really the Kano. accent. And like, if you put fighter. the MK3 costume on him, he right, would be Right, yeah, perfect. the MK3 version of Hell Kano yeah. would have been great. But he's not a bad-looking dude, right? Yeah, no, he's he's a good-looking guy, but he has, like, the, the hair loss. I think yeah. that's... See, when I think of Kano, I think of a guy who's bald or going bald because it makes him look more like a greasy mob boss. And Statham right. also has that voice, too. Yeah. That voice would do really well with the Kano character. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That gritty, like, I don't give a fuck. Well, that wasn't a good Statham and impression, he's got but the, anyway. And he's got the stuntman and martial arts background, so, I mean, he's, yeah. he's oh, right yeah. there, so. 
Shit, we need to make this happen. Think, like, if you wanted a, a younger version of Kano, you'd go Menno Bennett, right? Like, he, because he's got kind of like what I'd imagine Kano would look, look like before the cybernetics and everything else. I have no yeah. idea who that is. The guy who plays Deathstroke is, uh, oh, his yeah. name is okay. Menno Bennett. Gotcha, gotcha. But I guess going back to Shiva, um, favorite costume? I really like the costume from MK Armageddon. I just. I don't like the model. I, the model looks kind of bad to me. The face is okay, but the skin texture and the build. I mean, a lot of the characters look bulky. I mean, I think that actually worked for some characters, but she wasn't one of them. Um, I'm going to say MK3 overall, because I, I just really don't like the face in MK9. I really don't like the build in Armageddon. And MK3, I thought was a good balance. You know, there's the, 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 the whole thing kind of came together pretty well. Uh, favorite fatality? I'm gonna agree with Smoke and C the the skin the skinning fatality, because before all the 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 Shulkin characters, they were heavy hitters. You know they were very bestial in their presentation. Shiva's the first time we ever saw precision in her in her attack method, and I like that. I, I like the idea that you know it, it's very you know cut and precise with Shiva's fatality and just. I don't know. There, there's a, there's a there's an elegance to it that I think fits the character really well. That you're not dealing with a dumb male brute of the, of the of the race. You're now dealing with a more precise, more delicate female of the race, and that's how she decides to fight. I, I think that's kind of cool. So yeah, that's Shiva. All right. Um. Yeah, I, I agree about uh, costume-wise. I think um, her best outfit was Armageddon, but the model is terrible. And the thing is, like, I think the only time her face in anatomy has really looked good was the, the MK3, like the original claymation model. And I, there's something about the way in MK9, it's not just like the, um, it's not just like her sort of mannish, weird facial features or the the fact that some, for some reason like the texture of her skin even though she's supposed to be scaly and shit looks smoother and more rubbery than like the weird leather skin all the humans have but it's like the um i also think like her mohawk is too there's something wrong with it and like those those weird uh, spikes growing out of her forehead, I Didn't she something have is those? just off. Pretty sure she did. Hang on. With the the length and the shape of things, like she always had those, and they look fine in MK3, but they're like longer and weirder in nine. Yeah, and... she's kind of got like a Darth Maul thing going now. Yeah, I, I I there's like I don't know there's like I didn't mind it so much. Set her apart. Yeah, like, like I said, I like the little spikes. In fact, uh, in the original uh, art for MK1, Goro is supposed to have them. And, like, they, they never, like, put it on the claymation model, so it hasn't been in any game since. But I think he looked better with the little forehead spikes. I just think the ones in 9 look wrong. And, um... I don't know, so I'd sort of like to mix and match elements if I could, because I, like I said, I think Armageddon has the best costume because it's got sort of the most stuff on it, and that's always been my problem with Shiva. The reason I never gravitated toward the character is she looks so plain. Like, I complimented the, f complimented the fact that they invented a female Shokan and fleshed out the race, but uh, it sort of bothers me that she really does just look like a gender-swapped Goro. Like, she's just, you know, brown with spots, and, you know, her mohawk is the same way that his ponytail is in is where it's on the head and everything. And, you know, she's just wearing this little bit of red with a yin-yang, and that's pretty much it. That's the whole character design. Like, give me some kind of armor and just decorate her and gussy her up more, and I'd care about her more, I think, because she'd look more visually interesting. Uh... Favorite fatality, I gotta agree with the skin rip. I think, um, I mean, it sort of looks a little silly in MK3, because the, once the skin is pulled down to the ground, you can tell that it sort of all came out their mouth, and the, the, this rubbery pile has this big, wide, elongated mouth. I still think it's cool, though, like the, just to, to flay a man in one deft move. <laughs> 
There's something really brutal about that. And, I mean, she hasn't really had anything else that compares. I mean, her other fatalities, I mean, she has the, the funny clapping one and nine, but other than that, she just drives you into ground like a stake, which Jax also does and Shao Kahn also does. It's really one of the more boring and repetitive finishers they've done in the games. The thing I want to talk about that really sort of bugs me is in MK9, the way they changed her story from being Sindel's bodyguard to, like, the the jail guard. Because there isn't a stage in the whole game that's a jail. Like, every time she's guarding a prisoner, they're tied up in some other place because that's all they had to work with. And then they give her this throwaway line of dialogue where she's all like, we wouldn't be here if you hadn't tried to escape from the real dungeon. <laughs> it's just so stupid and poorly <laughs> written. It's like, yes, I'm going to tie you to a statue in this tower with magic, these bolts of blue energy, because that's how we do things in Outworld, I guess. I think the only time it made sense was at the very beginning when I would assume she captured Jax and the rest of the uh, special forces well, yeah, once no, they that's landed the on the fucked up thing. There is, I'm, I'm, there is a prison in the game. It's Goro's lair. Right, and exactly. When Sonya breaks Jax out, so Shiva is nowhere to be fucking found. <laughs> the guard is not guarding the only fucking pri prison in the game. She had one job. Yeah, exactly. She had one job, Shiva. <clears throat> Which is, the really weird thing is, like, she does appear on the island during the tournament in one scene to harass Cyrax. Like, she's not in the bracket. She doesn't actually fight the tournament. That's her only appearance during MK1. What the fuck is she doing there? And she's, she's introduced on screen before Goro is. That's just wrong. So I, MK9 just the way they used her doesn't make sense to me. It's like, why are you even in this game? I Pressure. think it, yeah, I think it just comes down to the, the simple fact of, well, fuck it, we gotta use her somehow. I just, how hard would it have been to have her guard Sindel? To follow Sindel around and fight beside Sindel? That was the most interesting part of her character, was that she was Sindel's bodyguard. To Sindel is, like, the, the most important peace in the invasion because the fact that she's alive is what makes it possible so her job as a bodyguard was actually important but now apparently Sindel doesn't need a bodyguard why should he? why should <sighs> she? she had delicious Shang Tsung brand cereal he had that coming by the way <laughs> we'll get to that another day bullshit I anyway <laughs> Um, it is. I will, I will point out that they do mention in her MK9 bio she was Sindel's bodyguard. They yeah, a long forget about time ago, which is also her story in the movie Annihilation. <laughs> so that's how much that's worth. Just saying, at least it's been sort of consistent. It's at least the detail is always really there. At all. I, if if yeah. she's such a good bodyguard, how did Sindel get away with committing suicide? She can't be there all the time, can she? How old is she? Shulhan's gotta take a dump. Sindel died like 10,000 years ago. How could Sin Shiva have been her fucking bodyguard? I know Shokans live a long time, but Goro's only 2,000. Shiva looks really good for her age. <laughs> yeah. And uh, speaking of Shokan women, I find it interesting that Goro has a harem of seven wives but apparently they're still okay with their women being warriors and high-ranking in the military. Sort that's of a progressive, mixed message right? there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. cool. <laughs> also, Shiva's of the royal Draco lineage, whatever that means. Yeah, so she's probably related to Goro somehow, like they're second cousins or some shit. Well, we know that they're not involved, so that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's at least something. They didn't go for that cliché. By the way, guys, I got a I got a viewer question about Shiva that I received just now. Okay. Oh, really? How do we feel about her back acne? It's it's it's, it's her looked spot. Terrible in nine, didn't it? Like it, it, it looked yeah. really bad, but shiny and popped out. Like they're supposed to be scales. Those spots. Supposed Were to they be still not scales? A sign of their or? like the fact that they're half dragon. 
With Goro, it looked like scales. With Shiva, it, it I can't remember what like it looked like. Giant, gross freckles on Shiva. Uh, oh, I'm looking at it right yeah. now on Google. Who sent That's the right. question in? It's a secret. <laughs> secret. <laughs> no, dude, it was Keep Justin, it bro. It was Justin. Okay, I'll just shout uh, him out. Of course it is. I'm just making sure they got a shout out so you're not okay. like completely ignoring who it was. Ah, <laughs> uh, good days. No, but I'm looking at it right now. It looks pretty bad. Like everything from her art, like her versus art to like her in game model is just what happened? It's all too smooth and shiny. Her skin doesn't have a texture. What the fuck? <laughs> you know if you took the the back freckles off, like I'd be like, well, they're half human, half dragon. It would make sense if some of them looked more human and didn't have the scales, but the the freckles make it worse. Like the the blotches make it look more awful, in my opinion. Like I have never noticed Shiva's plastic. back name. Back I really never have. Yeah. Just want to take like a a clear cell strip and just fucking. Uh, then, then she'd be all pockmarked and. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about something else, please? <laughs> 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 All right, well, let's wind this down. Um, before we wrap up the episode, I do have a couple of things to mention. Um, this is actually our first episode, and going forward, we're going to be affiliating ourselves with both Test Your Might and the Combat Tether, so we have that to look forward to going in the future. They're going to help us out, and obviously we're going to provide content, and that's very cool of them. So, I mean, the con are the combat tethers new, but test your might we've had before. And thank you very much to storms for that and everything. And for temp for starting that up. So that's really cool. And uh, hopefully we're going to try and do an extra segment going forward. I don't know when it's going to start. It's definitely going to happen um, at least before MKX, but we want to do it following MKX as well. But uh, an extra segment just for competitive tutorials or guides or whatever, just because Temp, Temp's really smart and knows a lot about this stuff. And with the podcast being the way it is, it doesn't always get its full, you know, fair shake. So just because we're trying to cram so much in at once and it's very free flowing. But I know there's a lot of people that are looking at the competitive scene that don't really know what it is or don't know what, you know, all the terminology is or just you know, simple, you know, bread and butter combos and stuff like that are just getting getting used to a character, knowing how to, you know, best maximize a character's potential. So we're hoping to do actual live, or not live, but uh, demonstrations and tutorials and guides with each character. And we might do some MK9 stuff just to get the hang of it, but definitely for MKX, we plan to do that. So we have that to look forward to as an extra segment. And speaking of extra segments, we're going to debut this one, our one this week, probably the same day this drops. So check that out. It's called Versus. It's going to be a debate segment where we just take two of us. They have to debate each other uh, on a, spe a specific topic that we determine. It's like this uh, the episode for this week is Sub-Zero versus Scorpion. Who has the bigger influence and importance in the MK franchise? So each person's... Uh, given one one of uh, one side of the case and they have to defend it as if it was a real debate so debating uh opening statements rebuttals and all that goes along with that and that's going to be a much shorter segment like 18 minutes i think 18 or 19 minutes is our first one and um going forward we try and keep it 30 minutes or less so that way if you're into you know smaller chunks of things content definitely check that out but that's something that's going to be very strict and structured so if you're into that more than just the this uh, free-flowing, you know, two to three hour podcast, definitely check that out. It's, it's a lot of fun. We, we just recorded that before we did this. So definitely give that a, uh, a look and let us know what you think of that. And we also hope to do some trivia and stuff like that going forward. But other than that, I like I said, I'd just like to thank the Combat Tether, Cenobite especially, and Tester Might and Storms for affiliating themselves with us. And, you know, going forward... Uh, it's nothing but up from here, and we got a lot of live streams to do each week. We're hoping to get on PS3 
um because we got people that keep requesting for ps3 so we're i just got to find the cords and we'll definitely do some ps3 live streams and we'll be streaming some more 360 and with mkx we'll be streaming on both consoles and maybe even computer i don't know i don't know if any of us plan to get it for steam i don't think currently we do but it's definitely something we'll talk about and figure out but we will have I currently both. have it right now but i can't get it to work i like, was talking I about play a lot of the i was talking oh, more mkx MK yeah but oh, okay i, I don't gotcha. know if any of our computers can run it i haven't even looked at the the well, details speak of for it. yourself What's it, that? it would be cool I to probably see can. someone someone run nine though because you can put like custom skins in there and shit right right and yeah, I definitely want to see and uh, MKX. I, I'd like it to be represented on all you know, all consoles and um, the computer as well, just because so we can you know appeal to all of our audience and be able to play, uh, have live sessions with all of you guys. That would definitely be the ideal situation. Right now, we have the Xbox One and the PS4 covered. So between the four of us, five of us technically, we're gonna have that covered. So. We, we, we hope to have a lot of live streams and all that stuff. So we have tons of different segments coming, guys. So it's it's going to be more than just this podcast from here on out. So hopefully you can dig that. But I just wanted to make mention of that because we, we got a lot of stuff coming. So hopefully you're digging it. And if you haven't subscribed yet or if you're a first-time listener... What the um, fuck are you doing? Yeah, well, listen to our guest. <laughs> he says it better. He says it better than I can. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, but yeah, you stuff- living under a rock or what? <laughs> so yes, if you if you like what we're doing, subscribe because we get a lot more coming. Not just the podcast, but so much more. So hopefully you dig this. But that's gonna do it for this episode. So I have a question for Smoke and See. You yeah. son of a bitch! I knew you were gonna do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he stuck it in. What's up? All right, Smoke and see yes. who's your who's your favorite character. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> gee, I wonder. You son of a bitch. Edge of my seat, bro. Movado. Well, there you have it. <laughs> no. All right, it, it is Smoke. Called it. Aaron right, cool. Black. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two. Okay. What is your favorite version of Smoke? Uh, I got to uh, side with Shadowloo on this. I don't really care. Aaron Black. Yeah, Aaron Black is my favorite. <laughs> Aaron Black is the best smoke. Um, the, the Smoke's been in like so few games. I'm just excited to see see him anytime he shows up. Word. Um, I'm, it makes I'm so really interested in the Inanra smoke, though. I really want to see where that goes. Yeah, me too as well. It is so refreshing to have more Smoke fans that realize it's all good, baby. It would have been more <laughs> good without. I'll, the- I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> give I'll give Razor I'll, I'll give Razor this though. Like I did fall, like the reason I love Smoke is because of Cyber Smoke. But like because they have used him so uh, so few times, like I'm just excited anytime he shows up. No, I can I can understand. I just. <sighs> It's, All right. it's disappointing. We got a kick-ass demon, though. Come on, man. Yeah, See that yeah, shit yeah. Action. I mean, his his future, if they use him right, will certainly be cool. I just MK9, man. <laughs> and now, whenever you look at him in MK3, you'll know those dreadlocks were once white <laughs> and sexy. <laughs> I, like, if anybody sees my avatar. Black. <laughs> on the forums, like saying Aaron Black. <laughs> no. If if, I, if anybody see my avatar on the forums, like I have Raiden from Rising as uh as my avatar. The reason being that that's what I think Smoke would look like as a cyborg, given what we know see, now. If his hair looked like Jack, then it'd be you know he'd not suck. <laughs> <laughs> Even his face, like if you knock the mask off and the battle damage, you see the other half of his face. He looks like Raiden to me, like exactly yeah. like Raiden. <laughs> He also had the best mask in MK9. I'll say it. Like, uh, default smoke. I don't know if I can. I, 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 don't know I like, I like I that like... mask. It looks kind of like hot rod tubes. I do like it's it, but simplistic. it's not the best. simplistic. I, I like the fact that it looks like an Alienware PC just grafted onto his face. <laughs> <laughs> I like Reptile's bird thingamadob, the quasi-beak mask he had going on. Also How long can we keep this masks? going before Cyborg I... shuts us down? Cyborg, do I have time for one more question? Uh, cryo mask is cool. I mean, the only reason people don't like it anymore is because we've seen it so many games in a row. What's yeah, that? I like it. Do we have time for one more question? Oh, dude, I stopped recording 15 minutes ago. I just figured I'll do the closing on my... No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, smoke and see. One more yes. question for you. Okay. And I want you to think about this because this is important. Right. Who is the most 
attractive Spice Girl. Take your time. Aaron. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron That's Spice. actually a valid answer in this one. Yeah. Um. Jeez, I don't know Ginger. That would be my pick as well. Good man. All right. Well, there you have it. I want to thank uh, Smoke NC for coming on. And if you ever want to come on to the podcast or just join us in the live streams, just let me know or let anybody on here know. Let any of the uh, regular hosts know. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely try and get you on. We got a few more people we want on. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely throw you in that and uh, get you on here sometime because it's a lot of fun. So hopefully you had a good time, Smoke NC. And. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me, guys, and I look oh, forward no to uh, yeah. coming back for our three-hour smoke retrospective. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, God. Indeed. But all right. I that like a round table or something. <laughs> Somebody smoke yeah. that should be a part of that thing. I think I can get through that without choking to death. All right. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Yep, no problem. Definitely. Well, that does it for this episode, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. See you. Later. Toodles. I expected you to say Aaron Black. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>